Chance Ellison, Ethan Irwin, Dan Merle, Stacy Howard, and Draco McWeeny, Ben the Boss Bateman, Clark Wolf. The singles tournament begins. The winner of that entire tournament faces John the Outlaw Roca at the Spectacular. What a battle we're in for. Happy Monday. Yeah, I know it's Tuesday, but happy Monday for us because Collider Live <laughs> is live. And we are back. It's live. Yes, and uh, happy veteran day, Veterans Day to all over the weekend. Um, I would just like to say to all our veterans, to everybody who provided service and fought for this country, we love you, we appreciate you, and thank you for everything that you've done um, for this great country. So with that, I wanted to... Bring in our co-host today. Hello, Roxy Stryer. How are you? Hey, Christian. How, how are you are doing? You? Still rocking the blonde. I'm loving it. Thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome, man. <laughs> You're just chilling. Hey, man. Got... Hey, man. Yeah. Way yeah. to dispel hey. all those myths about you being high with that reaction. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. It's just great to be here, Even man. today. <laughs> even today, I'm still not high. I know. Oh, I know. I believe it. Not but... nearly high enough. But, it's, oh, but you, it's just demeanors, and I like the I like the chill. We got Roxy hey. chill. We got Roxy chill. The Roxy chill. Hashtag so brave. Hashtag so, so, so I was so, high last night. So, so. Oh, good. Oh, How'd that go? Does that for count? You? Did you? Oh, well, yeah. Well, was, when I saw you, you were no. Oh, it was after. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay. Um, Marcus <laughs> Rileyus, Rolius, Rilius. How are you? I'm fine. Nice to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you. What's wrong? You got, you, he has complained sick? so yeah. much this morning, more than anybody I've ever. Heard. He's been grouchy. He's been grouchy. You know, uh, it's no. no. It's uh, the as you know, the fires yes. are, have taken over California, it's and fucking people up really gotten to me um with my sinuses yeah my wife too yeah, yeah it's too. just i it started you know, saturday people's houses are burning to the ground let's just be clear yeah i know i know people, that, that, people's houses are burning to and the we're ground. gonna friends talk, yeah, we're definitely gonna cover that because there's a lot of a lot it, it's crazy um, and uh they, no I, I i i can't even imagine what the, I know, these I people are going through yeah i'm and, just telling you that i'm fucking it's no, just it's ah, hurting. yeah it's it's ah. the the Side effect uh, for people who are, I guess, not affected in the in the worst way. You just you got hit. You got hit with the. Uh, oh yeah, I, 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 I went, You know, yeah. you're pretty far from there too. You know, it was it Saturday. Saturday, mm -hmm. I was walking Cal, and it was like Mad Max Fury Road. It was literally. Yeah. Hazy, the the it was a blood red sun. Right. Well, we, and we, we didn't want to take the kids out in it. You couldn't. Yeah. Be, I mean, well, they were t they were really? doing those announcements. No, they canceled my son's soccer game yeah. because of yeah. 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 Don't go outside, and it's just it's it's awful. Yeah. And you go. We were b glued to the news. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Watching this unfold, and it's it's awful. And Brett Sheridan, how you doing? Nice to see hey. you. Hey. How's everything going? Good. Good. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I came up with a plan. I've heard that I'm what not that? chiming in enough, you so are. I'm just gonna give like a subtle when I want to say something. I'm gonna say, "Oh, say something." <laughs> and, and then and then yeah, I'll, it might I'll actually say work. Work. Yeah, well you're talking about afterthoughts, <laughs> which we will talk about afterthoughts for sure. But let's talk subtle, it's very subtle. a couple of things that I want to talk about. First of all, the fires in general. Um yeah. the worst fires in California's history. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a good friend of mine, Frank Kramer, who does the Heidi and Frank show. If you watched one on one, you saw my interview with Heidi Hamilton, her broadcast partner, Frank Kramer, lost his house. Many people, many families lost homes. Um there were I, I think thirty, maybe more the, uh, casualties. There was, I mean, it was it was absolutely horrible with the things that were going going on. And 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 I'm not normally I'm not I'm not I don't like to take I don't like to take political thoughts to the air. I don't like to take political thoughts uh, to Twitter, especially on social media. Just not something I don't I don't disparage anybody who's done it. I think that you want to use your social media for politics, or whatever it is. That's that's on you, and and you have the right to do it. That's what that's. What it's there for for a lot of people, not something I choose to do. However, mm. I just thought, um, and this has nothing to do with right or left. I thought it had, in, it, as far as being a decent human being, was that uh, the president was being a dick bag, and mm -hmm. he was, uh, and he, and he, had, he wrote out the day that the fires are really taking over people's houses and, and and families are being lost, and he, and he's pointing blame at the people that it could have been prevented, even if, even if. There's first of all, it's federal, but that, that's that's another conversation in general. But even if it was one person that was in charge, that was, was in charge of it, that was their fault. Not the time. Yeah. yeah, it was just not the time. So all I wrote was, 
this is what you're writing? We need a leader because the whole thing, the big, the big thing is that everyone agrees, whether you're on the right or left, that the country's just split into two places, right? Yeah. So the whole, the whole thing is that wouldn't you at that point, he did it later on, but wouldn't yeah. it at that point? I thought that was so funny. Later though. on, after he caught, caught a lot if, of crap. As if he hadn't tweeted the first thing, just tweeted another thing like, by the way, we're here for you guys. We hope everybody's yeah. okay. That's the <laughs> first thing didn't, as a leader that should have been. Like right. Take your funding. Right. But and so I, and for, for the most part, and, and you know, a credit to a lot of his supporters, too, were, were uh, in agreement, a lot of people. There were two particular people, though. And one guy who claims to be a big fan, a big fan of the show, but but saying that I wasn't acting the way that I normally do because I have to see it. I have to see it this way. He's he, the president is 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 saying what's wrong and should be co- pointed out. If you think that, then you are not a decent human. You just I'm are not a the decent same human. Thing. If yeah. that is the thing that at that point that you think that that's what he should be tweeting, and he got and, he, and the president, people are dying. He caught he caught a lot of flack for it as he should from all sides. It just mm-hmm. was not the time to do it, and it was just. And, I, and I, that all ties into other, just other stuff that there was just so much that was going on. They, I went to dinner with my family on Saturday night, and they had only like contained like ten percent. I think it's like a forty now. Like, these are serious things, and what we need is for everyone to go support. Like if there's a hurricane, if there's an earthquake, if there's anything along those lines, any leader, no matter where you should say, whatever we can do, how to help your fellow. Uh, your fellow countrymen, whatever, not just America, anywhere. Not that even happens. just the people, the animals. Everything, right, right, right. So, but it was just so. Again, I don't like. I'm just not. I don't take the politics on, on social media. That one was just. That one really bothered. You me. know what one though? Really this me. is what I'm. I'm figuring out more and more. I'll tweet something that I don't think is necessarily political, but it's political. Right. Like to me, human rights issues are not. I'm not tweeting. The Republicans are saying, but if I tweet something like pro-gay rights, that shouldn't, to me, be a political statement that I'm making. I'm making a statement on my opinion on a group of people. Yeah. That was a little tougher, though, too. Not that you, I mean, I, I happen to agree with you. I'm just saying, but the, it's there are a, the party both lines, sides of right. the party lines. But so it's, that's... it's confusing now because like, I feel like if anything you say, you could decide— which party agrees with it? Like you could be talking about carpet versus hardwood, yeah. And I feel like you could make an argument for the fact that Republicans are hardwood and Democrats you, like carpet. You're not wrong. Like, that was I, my, that and was, I don't know. You're you're not wrong. And my my thing was the thing that I was getting into it was just like, it's like I just it's this blind thing right now. It's just like it's okay if some like for someone that I like, right? Let's say one of my favorite actors is Al Pacino. Okay, I love Al Pacino. Whatever whatever he does, if Al Pacino comes out and says I kick dogs and like it, ha. I'm like, you shouldn't kick dogs, Al. Yeah. You, you shouldn't do it. That's wrong to do. But it's this blind following of like, because I tweeted out, and then this this one guy, that the fan of the show, who says, well, you know, he says this. Like, you don't have to protect him on every single thing. Right. You, you just don't. It's like, it's okay to still support him if you want to. You can support him. If you are you believe in anything, you think the economy's gotten better and all that stuff, you can do that. But if he's a dick, it's okay to call him out for being a dick. It's just, it, This is the problem in general. Yeah. With and, and and the same goes for our for for our side too. See, and I'm doing it as well. Same thing goes for on on the left side, the right side. The same thing goes. If someone's a dick, you should call them out. On you know it. what's dickish? Cheating on your wife. Right. That's dickish. Right. right. Sorry, Clinton. Big fan of you as president. What a douche. Super Dickhead. dickish. Right. Yeah. Totally and lying about dickish. it. And he was a liar. And lying. Yeah, he was yeah. lying. He was That's, a full on liar. I'm not going to sit there and be like, because he's a Democrat, yeah. say, but but you know, it's, I, it's okay, yes. though. And no, I, that's a really fucked up thing to yes, do. Yes. And I think Hillary Clinton One. is super dishonest, and I think she can't yep. be trusted. But, you know, I still I still voted for her. Um, but, the, but if that's your argument for defending Trump, is that Clinton did it, then you're a dickbag. Well, that's, that's what I mean. Know, that always comes up with the. Well, you guys, where were you when Clinton? <laughs> I think the whole. I, yeah, I'm not. My thing is too. I just think the whole system is a shit box. Yeah, no. I think it's, it's a whole big shit box. Can um, I chime in real quick? Yes, sir. Uh, just like a streamline of peace for for everything. Uh, I think one of the most important things, and I'm having Alex put a link in the description, is to donate to uh, everyone, Absolutely. all the first responders, everybody, yes, all the fighters, because that's honestly one of the biggest decisions. I mean, one of the biggest things right now is that there are so many people risking their lives to save others, and I know that people have died. And there's a there's a bunch of other links as well. I think Ken tweeted out a, a whole list of twi- uh, of links yeah. for people to donate to. I think that's like that's one on of the most Twitter important well. things because you, we can sit here all day and and complain about. You know, a guy who's clearly not all there, but I think at the end of the day, if we just put that aside and just 
you know, forget him for a second yeah. and just really take the time. Just, you know, donate. It doesn't matter if it's $10 or 100 You know, it's something. They're and I think that's the most important thing. Well said, Specific Costa. Thank things. You. They're not just money. You know, if you have water bottles, yes. they're looking for yes. those. Face wipes, they're looking for those. Um, there's a list online. Yeah. And there are even people right now who, if you if you can't figure out uh, how to make it to a station or whatnot, there's, like, people to accepting Venmos to bring certain... Uh, products to places yeah i also want to point out ktla channel 5 through los angeles if you google it airbnb is offering a uh, free room board to people displaced uh first responders anybody that needs it so ktla uh, dot com you can check out cool um all right well then, again make sure you do that check it out thank you to everybody who has it thank you to all the wonderful volunteers that have helped thank you to all the wonderful firefighters that are out there and everyone who is doing their part to uh, just make sure that everybody is is as good as they can be so leave water out for the animals yes. yeah um all right now as we move on there is a couple what i realized today roxy i need you to help me with some stuff i'll do my best man i don't remember shit when I was from being when I was younger, do I'm, all your S bombs count as F bombs? No, 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 no. Because okay, here's the thing. So what the first part of it is, I was listening back to the show. I had a conversation with Roxy last night. The amount of F bombs that were on the Wednesday show, it was unbelievable. It was like a, it was, None it was, for me. It, you, 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 you beat out a whole yeah, Mark Scorsese. You're not talking film. to Roxy right now. It's, yeah. this is the end <laughs> of the show. Yeah, I don't don't say. Say. yeah, it was, Mar it was, Mar I was number one. Uh, Martin Scorsese film has nothing on you, but it was. Um, so what we talked about last night is you're gonna get a, everybody's gonna get four per show. So and you can only do four, and um, there's no rollover. Are there rollovers? No rollovers. You can just save it up. Uh, to you, only, you only get four. Oh, if, it, if, if, if you go past four, microphone's off for the day. Four an episode out. or four for the week. Four an episode. Okay. You get four an episode. Every throughout. person. That's generous, Every person. everybody. Every person. That's is really four. generous. You get four. Four is enough. Four is good. I used one already today. I used on one too. Yeah, I marked. I go that okay. one. Roxy, and I marked it down. Oh, wow. I used one I too. I had I had a half one. It was coming out, so I'm gonna That's, I'm gonna claim gonna, it. Are you gonna have a half? Yeah, I'm gonna claim uh, it. Riley's I'm just gonna, gonna say farthing all the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that count for sound bites? Um. Yes. Okay. You're you're at one. Okay. You're oh, at one. Yeah, damn it! I used that. All right. Cool. Yeah. Cool. All right. Cool. All right. <laughs> but I'm gonna let the other cool, one. Cool, cool. The, the the S the S bombs and everything. Wait. So if it's a sound bite of me though, does that count for me or for cops? No. That counts for cops. That's cops. Yeah. Counts for the production team. Production team unfortunately only gets four. And we're um, doing this because we're trying to be more kid friendly. It, I think that we can. No, that's not the case because otherwise we just cut it out all, all together. I think because when I was listening to that conversation with the alien conversation, which was a great conversation, with the alien. there was more. I expressed myself very clearly and articulately. That was my problem. I think that you. I think there was so much inside of there that you were saying that was good that was taken away because of all the f bombs. And I think and, that it's and not it just you. It's all of us. Like, you I sound like every teacher it. I ever had. <laughs> uh, real, real quick, did you see that there are unidentified flying objects in Ireland? I saw that. Someone tweeted that out no. to me today yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, something, going, something going on. Because they're mother aliens. Something going on. That does not count. I that does know. Not count. I don't know. We're getting, you know, they're buzzing the tower. You know. Yeah. I wonder what our guest tower. today thinks of that. We should pick his brain on that. About the f bomb. Yeah. Thing? No. No. Oh, the about aliens. the aliens. Oh, okay. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I would love to. That. And you know, he was gonna. He said he's gonna make a run for president in 2020. Did he really? I didn't hear that, but yeah. he is very politically active. Oh, yeah. on We're talking MSNBC about MSNBC and all the great Ron Perlman, who will be in at eleven thirty. If you guys did not know that Woo! already, yeah, Ron Perlman will I be. I love will be, him. He's great. I mean, come on. I know. He's he's, great. He's I can't best. wait. I can't wait to sit down and talk with him and and just kind of like you said, pick pick his brain. But on aliens, I was I was dropping my my kid off today, and I was thinking, you know, she's she's seven, and I was like, you know, all the things remembering like. How much do we, we had just a nice day yesterday? I was like, gosh, okay, hopefully she'll take these memories, remember all this stuff. And I was like, hope better than me. I can't remember anything from yeah. when I was younger. And my wife says it's because I blocked a lot of stuff out, but I can't, I don't remember anything. And it's like this you, certain You blocked thing. a lot out because they were. Well, my parents are divorced. I, you know, I don't really have like, uh, I don't have a lot of good memories of my parents together. I like all yeah. that kind of stuff too. I know and how I that goes. I don't yeah. think about that. I don't, I don't ever think about it. So it's like, uh, I remember some things, but I don't really. If I try to chime back into memories from up till like I was ten, can't can't do it. Seriously, can't ten? It. Around ten. that, wow. I can't access a lot of it. Yeah. If you ask me, certain things I remember. I remember going to Yankee games with my dad. I remember certain things, but I don't really. Yeah, I don't really remember much. I have oh. one memory of my parents Together. being cool, yeah. and it was like he was on his way to work, and they kissed once. And I'm glad I have that. How, yeah. how old were you? I was ten when they got divorced. Yeah, yeah same, same age. Same age. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, so yeah, yeah. So I don't. I just don't remember. And I also, and it's that I don't even know if it stretches back to ten. My, my, I tell this story all the time. I this. I walked 
I was looking at my something that hanging in my house just like last year, and I said my my wife, I go, that's amazing. When'd you put that up? She's like, two years ago. <laughs> and I was like, oh, didn't even notice it was there. For like and this is why, also, if you take a kid um, before they're five years old to Disneyland, you're wasting your money. Because yeah. they don't Unless it's for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's for you. Right. That's yeah. for you. you. Anything you do with your children yeah. up until like five or six, that is, you know, don't fucking take them to Paris yeah, and stuff like that. There's one. Don't farthing fluke and right. Um Right. My sister did that, you know? Yeah. She went, yeah, five. No, they took uh, my niece when she's six. Waste of money. Just yeah. waste Recently. of money. Yeah. So, yeah. Take them to. Well, well you target okay. and let them go it, in the toy aisle and tell them it's Disneyland. It also it also makes me real. It also mm-hmm. makes me realize that maybe they were right that you shouldn't smoke weed out of an aluminum can. Mm-hmm. You ever do that in college? Yes, I did. I did. Sorry, yes, no. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like I think that 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 might because they said you know can mess up your memory. Maybe it did. I don't know. So do you think that who you are should, you? You should just do nothing with your kids until do, nothing. Like, no, no, no. I, I still. You, but could you? Um, Could you just kind of like no? Because I think that there's something take them nowhere. I think subconsciously you remember a lot of stuff. And again, this is there's a lot of kids that have great memories. I my memory just stinks. I have I have really good childhood memories, and then you guys know I lost three years of my life right. that I have no memory of. But mm-hmm. I, my childhood, starting at like five, I've got memories. Yeah, I see. It's weird. I think uh, not do any. You you do things with them. You you play with toys and imagination and go to parks and things like that. Yeah. But they don't need you know to go to Paris and they don't need. I mean that yeah. If you yeah. if you have the means, go do that. But I think sometimes people are are trying to overly treat their children and this overly will be a entertain them. Oh for God, Timmy. We he's three to, months old. We got you know season passes. We'll take them to Disneyland all the time. You know it's like what's oh, the you're... furthest you ever took your kids? Um, Venice. Oh. California. Uh. Um, <laughs> the furthest we went. Uh, that's like Disneyland. Yeah. New Orleans. Okay, but that was for my brother's wedding. You know. Uh, yeah. yeah. You aren't like taking that. No, too. no. I don't think we. How old were they when you took them? Um. Oh, geez, it was about three years ago. Oh, okay. So nine mm-hmm. and six. Yeah, don't remember. What that. do you guys think about no kid weddings? Uh, sometimes I, I think it, it's good. Uh, so We're dealing with that right now, actually. Really? Let me get uh, let me get the temperature. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's like you know. I obviously, will, I want you there and yeah. you there and you there. If you're getting married um, well, my next kids are year, gonna be a big problem. Yeah, yeah, you're you're getting married next year. Yeah, and you'd have no kidding wedding. Unfortunately, I won't be able to be there. Yeah. <laughs> no, because we we talked about that. Yeah. Like like uh, for certain people, we're allowing it. Like, and I know that sounds kind of maybe douchey, but no, it's like certain people. I I would want like you and your kids you to be at there. Your wedding? Yeah. Um, I don't know about your kids though. <laughs> well, I mean, we I would think, gladly get be... we would gladly get a They're sitter. Out. Yeah, that's what I. You know, that's right. the thing. No, we no, like to have. I know. I know. What you're I, I could picture him going. Yeah, we can get kids. Your kids are cool, but why your kids no. Why wouldn't you get a sitter? Because I, I mean, I, again, my mother-in-law, not really around a lot to to, to watch the kids. Right, father-in-law, right. Wyoming. Yeah, my parents, Florida. We don't have anybody. We yeah. just don't See, have. We don't have help. And there are. I mean, and it ain't cheap. And the same thing, like my fiance has a, a very young niece. I have a niece, so they're gonna come. They're gonna probably be in the wedding. So what are we gonna do? Like we're like I want to see some kids, kind of forming up and having fun. So certain people, yeah. I think. Brett's gonna be invited to your wedding. Yeah. So what? are you. But I, but Brett. What are, oh. <laughs> I've Brett. known Brett a very I, I, long time. Oh, Brett. man. Speaking of memory, yeah. we've yeah. only told this story. Well, I know, I know. That you guys met at the restaurant. <laughs> so did so the we. Same With, restaurant. Yeah. Same yeah. restaurant. Yeah. Right. Brett, Brett, Brett and some, Riley. For some reason, I have never seen you guys like solo hang have out. a conversation. I don't, well, I don't solo hang out anyway. That's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah, Brett, Brett and Riley have been friends for uh, just a, for a long time. You guys like text? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've been, yeah, I. There was like we've, we've had we we've, we've been we've been trying to do a double date. Yeah, but, uh, that's, I just don't that's think tough. Roxy understands Brett. I yeah. think that's what it comes down to. I, don't I think, think you I get understand him, him more than Makuga gets him. Really, I, I, don't, I think so. Even, yeah, I don't think you guys. I don't think you get him. And I think that's that's because can we talk about our conversation that we had via text? On, on the oh air. sure, sure. Because Brett, Brett and I were uh, were going back and forth because I listened to Afterthoughts. I said, "Tell Roxy to stop saying f bombs all the time." That's what <laughs> that's what she did. It was Brett. It was Brett's mandate. No, um, no. It was I listened to Afterthoughts on Monday as on Saturday as I usually do. Did you get a chance to hear? No, it this I haven't week? heard it. So it's um, on Friday, right? It's on Friday. It drops okay. on Friday. So those of you who don't know, people have been asking. They retitled it after our conversation. Oh, good. It's, it starts. It says Afterthoughts Smart. on on the top. 
and you get it on the Collider Live podcast feed. That's where you should go and listen to it. It's a great recap. And they had this whole segment on Brett. They didn't think Brett was chiming in enough and that he was kind of um, not being himself. And and so I texted him. I said, listen to, listen to Afterthoughts. And he, you know, he wrote me back. And he's like, yeah, I've kind of felt the same way. And it's just been – just kind of been, been – uh, last week – wasn't that fun for you last week? You just felt that it, it was... I was feeling like I was trying to get back in the groove and yeah. everybody has built up a rapport and yeah. trying to chime in sometimes is like, ah, ah, well, you guys have all touched on everything. I don't mm. need to. To which I said, well, that's your point of view is going to be very different from everybody else's. And I think that that's why I was like, he's like, I would rather be sitting at the table than in the back in that corner. I said, I don't disagree with you. I think that corner just kind of silences everybody. So I said, move up to the move up to the table and, and have more conversations. And I think that one of the things too he said is that you guys just don't know each other yet. You just don't know each other well enough yet too because I, you because you and I have known each other now four years. Uh, Riley and the same thing too. We have a good the th- one thing is that I've noticed even when we go to screenings together, you and I, it's like people are like, Oh, I, I think it was with Sam. Sam's yeah, like Sam, Sam Basher. Sam Basher goes, Oh, I see why you guys do a show together. Yeah, because of that which we should talk about. Which was the first one? Yeah, yeah, instant family. No, oh, the, we can't talk about the cup family, holder yeah. situation. Oh, the cup holder situation. Let's get their point. We're not going <coughs> to. We're not going to tell you whose point of view this was, and mm. I want to see. I mean, I'll I'll paint it very uh, bipartisan. I don't think you're going to paint it bipartisan. I promise you, I will. I promise you. <laughs> I don't yeah. think you're capable of it because what you believe is H- the truth. Well, I'm going to tell you this, and I, though I'll <laughs> yeah. pitch it. I'm going to yeah. pitch it. I'm going to pitch it. You okay. guys tell me. All right. Okay. All right. So there are when you sit down in the ArcLight movie theater. There are two cup holders, yeah, right on the sides. Um, do you believe that the right hand side is for the person sitting down, or does the person supposed to get both, uh, b- both of them? If they have the two things, because of the way You've it stretches, told it so the way, but wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. The way that it stretches down, do you believe that each person should be able to have two things? Because it should sit at the very end. There, you do know something. There's a cup holder on the uh, right. There's a cup yeah. holder are on the you, left. Are you? Kidding me right now. Uh, just wait, let's ask. Let's ask. What do you guys think? Do you think that the person should be able to have one drink that goes in the, in the side, or should they be able to have two drinks that goes into the side? Well, f- I the first thing I ask is who has two drinks? Yeah. Well, I'm just saying. Like I'm, don't, one don't, person don't, with two drinks. If somebody had two drinks, if they did have two drinks, would it be okay to say, okay, listen, I have two. It's, uh, it's, made, it's made for two, so I'm going to put can number one here, and then I'm going to put can number two here. Or is it just designated to have one side there? I, I've never heard a worse telling of a story. I, I think it's pretty clear. Was that clear I, enough? I, it's, it's clear. Until it's late. It's a little. Uh, I think. It, yeah. It's leading towards the person with the two drinks is in the wrong. Um, you think so? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Now can yeah. I? Can I? Because you're chime taking. In? You're taking. Why is that? I thought can I tried it. No, you, didn't, you did not. You did not. You did not. Can you? Can I chime in? Uh, here's the deal. It's for I, one fucking place. Here's the deal. Here's, oh, here's the deal. That's one right there. Here's the deal. <laughs> All right. Christian said, everybody knows you get your cup holder on the right. That's not something I've ever been told before. I had no idea you get the one on the right. Who's to say I don't get the one on the left? Because That's tough because I think it's just, he, are you right-handed? I'm guessing yeah. you're assumed because I'm right-handed, so my assumption is the right one. So I, the way th- mine the, too. The I just way, naturally assumed right. it was on the right. The way that the rows work... Mm. There are cup holders on the ends of each row. Okay. So somebody does. There accounts for one person to get two cup holders. Not everybody. One person. And I'm not saying I should be that person. But what I am saying is I was sitting one in look, from the person. Look, look, look. look at this. So. Okay. So I'm sitting. <laughs> see? Yeah. I, you get it on both sides. I'm on the right side sitting one in from the person on the right. And he puts his drink on the right. I had two drinks. So I put one on the right and one on the left because Christian sat down and there was nobody next to him. But here's my problem. If somebody nobody, sat... But, but if, nobody was. But if somebody did sit there... Screening. But if somebody did sit there, though, if somebody then did sit there... Then I would have taken my cup out. If you needed it, but it was an empty screening, but what if I and would... you sat down, and there was a cup open. You had one drink. But what if I somebody came in? What if somebody then sat down right afterwards and wanted that space, and I'd be the so jerk that took one... the spot? No, I would put one on the floor, and you could move it. Oh, you have selfish. to say is, no, it, that's ridiculous. There was it's nobody selfish. in the screening. Should we ask the fans? Nobody what they was think? there. <laughs> if if the screening was jam packed, I yes. wouldn't have done that. But there was nobody there. I was sitting in between two people I know, and you wanted to both be selfish. of whom had one drink. You took you took two cup holders. No one. <laughs> So, guy, uh, Booth. I think what, there's so many circumstances. What's the, what's the booth? What, it's tough Co- to really. Cody, Cody Hall, what's your take on this whole situation? Be honest. 
Um, my take on the situation is you should get one cup holder. Thank you. Absolutely. Not Ro two. Uh, well, even if there's extras. Copster. I, if Roxy was saying that this screening was not very full, then I think it's fine to take two. But if someone came along and said, hey, I'm sitting right here, then... Take the I cup absolutely would have totally taken fine. the cup out. So yeah, but the thing is, okay. too, I see. Yeah, I just don't it's, understand. It's gray. There's no yes. like. It, yeah. it, I don't know. I, I didn't gonna even know have... that thing on the right was a thing. Sometimes I put. I have one drink. I put it on the left. Yeah, I'm thinking you're supposed Let to. Let me do ask that. you this: but what, who said? what two drinks the, the did you have? Theater people. Yeah, you just double fist in uh, Long here's, Island here's Ice Tea. Because no, no, no. I realized I, I've had two drinks before here's after I said put it on the floor. I had I had a water and then I had a cup of ice. And I right. eat ice during the movie. It's like my thing. It's not oh, you're, you're and awful. that's not the thing you're complaining. You're awful. <laughs> I didn't hear that's that. The worst. That, didn't, that didn't bother it's me. Really, no, it's not loud. I suck. On, I yeah. put a piece Alex, in. I, go, I what suck on until it's gone. Alex, what's your take? Alex you left. I don't really care. I don't know. <laughs> it's fair. So, so you, you're okay if somebody takes your. Uh, Most personality Alex has shown so, on the show. So good. Have, so good, Alex. You killed it. I have a lot. I I have a very weak bladder. Oh. So I don't usually uh, do have a drink. So you don't even need a cup holder. Exactly. Okay. So somebody so could really use care. your cup holder. So that's why you don't care. Okay. Sit so next to me. You can use my cup holder. Thank All you right. so much, or sir. A sign. It's uh, it's just dependent on sign. the uh, the circumstance. I would say that if you there's nobody there, you can use your two cup holders. If somebody right. sits there, you are courteous, no. and I go one. with the right one. This is mine. This is where so I'll put my drink. Somebody, somebody should have a sign it. up about that. You know what? Man, I, I actually want. I actually want. I'm going to ask the ArcLight because maybe, maybe you're, it has never been made clear. It's not yeah. clear. It should be. clear. No, it's not even Each clear that you can't go in uh, before right. five minutes of the movie. Well, it's, it's on the ticket. Yeah, it's, it's on the ticket. Um, okay. It wasn't so on our ticket. So we, we saw a couple of movies. We can't talk about Instant Family yet because it's an embargo, right? Yeah, but I'm pissed about that. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's, it doesn't make sense. Can I'll tell I you this. Can I talk about the fact that I don't like that the embargo is the day before the movie? Yeah, it doesn't. It, normally that, that means, it means it's a poop. Yeah. yeah it's That's all we'll say. That's all we'll say. That typically means it's a poop, but. No, what, a poop, but. Not always. Is, a poop, is, but. Is, is Widows, does Widows have an embargo? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Can you start, uh, Alex, can you give it, see if there's an embargo on, uh, on check Widows? Ro just check Rotten Tomatoes check and see it. if there's a. Uh, Reviews up yeah, about it because that one. That's I, how I check for embargo. How do you check for embargo if it's not in the, the email? email? Oh, the email or or yeah, Rotten Rotten tomatoes. tomatoes. But it's uh, we saw it. We saw Widows last night. It looks like there's. Well, you know, no, you know what? It's it's there's no embargo. It it, it was a tiff. Oh yeah, yeah, tiff. yeah. Ninety four percent. I'll tell you what. I don't get that. I I don't get I it. Don't really? Get I don't get it. I did not like it. It wow. was it was the one of the most mediocre things I've seen in quite some time. I wow. think that is such a great word to describe it. Yeah. I think it is. I thought it was dull. D That's yeah. a bummer. I, I thought the performances were really good. Good performances. I yeah. thought it was predictable. Super I thought it predictable. Was, I love Steve McQueen. I thought it was poorly directed. Weird um, edits. Really strange edits. There's one scene that happens. I won't spoil it with Michelle Rodriguez. When just uh, you know what scene I'm talking about? A couch. I'll just put it in the couch. Yeah, okay. So weird. Yeah. So misplaced. Never go back to it ever again. There's certain things that happen without the unnecessary movie. Unnecessary oh. times four thousand. Some of the dialogue. I mean, there was there was some of the shots that were just trying to be artistic. Um, I don't get it. it uh, Ninety four. One hundred and fifteen people fresh. Seven rotten. Wow. Uh, well, if, if I fresh to rotten this, I honestly am so sorry. I'd have to rotten it. I would probably do it too. B by very so underneath little, you'd go but... underneath three out of five. Yeah. Yeah, I would too. I, wow. would do. I, I okay. did not like the movie at all. I thought I was, I was, I went in excited for this movie. Me too. I wanted to love it because the premise of it alone is really cool. The and the actors in it, yeah. and, you know, I love watching some women kick butt. But that was the thing. The I premise didn't of the movie. That, the premise. So. Of, that's right. The premise of the film is that these widows of this elite kind of crime team, right, have to do a job together because their husbands all died. The problem that I, the, what I wanted to see was that these women they've been around it for so long that no they were not criminals but they knew it they knew the plan these these women just were just kind of like thrown into it and it was just like oh wait can you do this oh yeah I think I can well good luck and it, it, it's there's no way that the way that they portray these characters that they'd be able to pull off anything we also mm -hmm. saw a lot about their relationships that meant nothing to me and made yeah. me it made me less invested than initially yeah I almost would have rather known nothing about their relationships I think that's yeah I, just, I can't I don't it. know I I would I would I could see if this had like a 60 something I could see it but at 94 it's crazy 90, well, it's also it's one of those things to where just being able to explain again how Rotten Tomatoes works is that 
like I just asked you, do you think it is better than three out of five? And somebody, if somebody was just like, that was fine, it's a three. That counts as a fresh review. Yeah. So, may, but maybe people loved it. I I don't know. I I. It's funny because the, all the people that I was with last night, that I saw it, all felt the same way. Really? Just everybody. Like Alex saw it last night. Eh. Everyone that we were with, that we were sitting in the... Uh, Alex, what did PJ think of it? Uh, PJ didn't like it at all. Yeah. It's just, it didn't see, it's, I didn't yeah. not like it at all. I just didn't it's like black. it. Yeah. It was, eh. I, I'm so surprised with yeah, this movie. Me too. I got home last night. I was like, how was it? And I was like, it's fine. I exactly mm. really love it. I definitely wouldn't go see it. Yeah. And I wouldn't recommend people seeing it because no. it just... There was nothing to write home about. That was the... A movie like this, a heist movie like this, you can always at least take out well that one scene mm -hmm. when they were able to do this. It wasn't, and and I love Daniel Kaluuya. I thought he was just such kind of a stereotypical. That like, was the worst use of him I've oh, ever seen. I'm I'm menacing. I'll kill you. I'm menacing. I just killed you. I'm menacing. And, and that's all it was. And he did a great job with what he was given. Yes, it had nothing to do with that. Performances. Just, we're not really. I don't think there was a bad performance no, in the movie. No, I guess I didn't like the script. Yeah, the script and the directing was not yeah, good. Yeah, I didn't like the directing. Yeah, I didn't like the story, and I didn't like the way they showed it. it yeah, eh. Violet so it Davis wasn't good. Was, no, no, right. no yeah. it just yeah. it just wasn't. It wasn't yeah. a stinker. It no, wasn't the no. worst thing I've ever seen. Just wasn't good. I think because of who's involved, and because of this ninety-four percent, I was expecting Oscar caliber, maybe great high school heat. Right, that's what I was yeah. saying. Maybe like heat. Love heat. And I, I was always, heat. I was hoping for like the the female version of heat. And it was not that. So the all. guy, the San Francisco Chronicle, the one thing that stood out to me, it says Widows is an unimportant movie. <laughs> it's good. That was yeah. it. I'm like, well, yeah. all right. Yeah. Totally. And it could have been an important movie. 100%. Yeah. And it yeah. really wasn't. You know, I think the, when the news came out that he was doing this in, in the, the log line, that they, they were making it this is important. Yeah, you know this is going to be really I mean, good. On, blah, a, blah, blah. on one aspect, it is because again, it's it's Viola Davis, Michelle Rodriguez. Yeah, um, along you have you've got a Latino woman, African American woman who are leading. What's this. the name of the blonde woman? I don't remember. She was. I was I very impressed was by her. Yeah, but you look at those two particular women, two women of color leading this heist movie, and it is very important. And they're it both is. great. In and it. They're both great in it, and and the director, um, again. Uh, a, a, another director person of color so I was like this could this could be very important it just it's an unimportant movie as far as the story goes as far as like what it could be I just thought it was a letdown but anyway All what do we know going into this it had everything going for it yeah like I was just so excited yeah so it just didn't work uh, yeah. for us but it seems like 94% what the hell do we know yeah what, <laughs> the, what the hell do I know 94 yeah, exactly. yeah. that's that's really high um, I know that one of the things so what, what time is it right now do we have game uh, time it's 10 33 game no I want to talk no, about no, this just like the, game time. Yeah, there's some news that we have to talk like about the but game. one of the things we didn't get a chance to talk about at least I didn't on Collider Jedi Council because they even some fans tease on it that maybe Lucasfilm and, and Disney likes to announce big news right after Jedi Council goes off the air uh, because they <laughs> announced we, we had this whole conversation on Thursday about what it, a, a user had, had 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 sent in a question about what um, series would you want to see out of any secondary category. Mine was Palpatine. I still think like a Tom Hiddleston rise to power Palpatine story, ten episodes. In, Darth Plagueis. Yeah, yeah. That, that to me is still yeah. the, the series I, I want to see. That. Um, and then there was the announcement that Cassian Andor. Yeah. Diego Luna's character mm -hmm. from Rogue One is getting his own series. And people like, well, some people I saw were like, well, why? I like the idea. And I'll tell you why. Because of stuff they didn't explore in Rogue One that they explored in the novel. And that was that uh, Cassian Andor was a separatist. And inside, so if you're not familiar with Star yeah. Wars, the, the, the separatists was what Count Dooku and Christopher Lee. And, and basically what the Republic fought against was the separatists. And that's what Cassian's family was were, were separatists. If they cover some of that stuff, because it's before the events of Rogue One, leading up to how he got involved in the Rebel, uh, the Rebel Alliance, and and all that, and this, this is the, it could go dark. This is the making of the Rebel Alliance. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like it's already fully not fully formed. Well, pretty much fully formed in Rogue One. So if you're going back with him, you know why is he a part of this separatist? Yeah. When did he ch change over? This is a chance to get some prequel love in there, get some prequel kind of looks. Throw rebels in there too. Rebels. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we saw it for animated. I get it when not a lot of people check it out, but for this, this will this will get a lot of eyes. I mean, people will go in yeah. there and want to see this. Yeah. Are you guys finding that people who don't want this are people who didn't like Rogue One? 
Um, oh, I don't know. I didn't really see any bat, uh, no, the, people not Yeah, I didn't it. see a, a ton of it. Just the ones that I did see was like just because he was a secondary character. I was like, that's who you're going with? And I think that that's the thing is with that character. He wasn't explored deeply. And I think that this is one of the differences. Someone asked me this morning, why have I done this big switch from like wanting to see more television than movies? Because I can get more exploration of characters. I can yeah. learn so much that's more about it. That's the great part about TV. Yeah. I got 10 episodes to figure out who this guy was and some great stuff to further the lore of Star Wars. And I... I I think that if someone said to me right now, you only could have Star Wars TV shows in this way. Not, I'm so glad because I was always scared about it when I heard like ABC was going to do it. I would not right. want ABC to do it. But the sh a streaming service to where they're going to dump the kind of money they are, like Mandalorian style, if someone said to me, you can only get those types of TV series from now on or movies, I'm taking TV series all day long. Um, because perfect example, Mark Fernandez tweeted out today, Dear Disney and Lucasfilm, you know we want uh, we want an Obi Wan movie. I said f that. I want an Obi Wan series. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna give Loki a series, which I'm cool with, give Obi Wan ten episodes. Tell me all the stuff that happened throughout the time of Revenge of the Sith into now. And Ewan McGregor will come back. He's done TV. Did Fargo. He'd do some stuff. Get him back in. Make that a series. And that's a way more people, more subscribers. I'm in for that. I'm I'm not ready to go there yet until I see the goods. You That's know, fair. I want to see the Mandalorian. Everything looks great on paper. You got Taika Waititi coming in. You got Dave Filoni directing the pilot. These are all good things, but I want to see it. Yeah. I want to see how how deep are we going? Is it going to be a little dark? Is it going to be a little gritty? Or is it going to be you know very accessible to the masses? Once I see that, I love the idea of an Obi Wan TV series, but I also love the idea of a trilogy or a movie just to see. But but we know that, that we're on even hold. If you, even if you get a movie, right? So that's six hours, right? That's only six. Trilogy, yeah. Yeah, it's six episodes as opposed to ten. You still sure. leave four more out there that you really, if you had him. I wouldn't want him to do it in the cheap version. I'd want him to do the same thing they're doing with Mandalorian, like a hundred million plus. Right? Yeah, it, I mean, and the reason I always want to go for Obi-Wan, I kind of want a movie more because the character is huge. The, the implications of the story are huge. Big screen, that's what I like. Yeah. But... Mandalorian comes out and slam dunks it. Yeah. Just the home run, all the sports analogies you want. Then I'll be probably on more of your end. Yeah, I just think that as far as like the goods, I think that they've shown the goods again when I show Stranger Things, Ozark, sure. Game of Thrones, first three seasons of Walking Dead. Like you can really do some great stuff on on TV. So. Um, Anyway, uh, what say you guys out there, whether you're watching on the replay or whether you're watching live, what do you think? Do you guys think that uh, they should do an Obi-Wan series or should they do an Obi-Wan movie or should they just leave it alone altogether? What other series do you want to see and do you like the Cassian Andor stuff? Go ahead and comment. Let us know what, what you guys think. What ended up happening to Scarlet Witch? Um, I think it's still it's it's still so, rumored because yeah. everybody's still talking about this Loki series because they announced it in their official press release, but nothing about Scarlet. No, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there, are reports from Variety or THR, whoever broke it. It's one of those those outlets, and then Disney confirms Loki, so that scoop was correct. You can then go off of that and say they're probably still developing mm. Scarlet Witch. Yeah. Um, Okay, Riley, just some stuff that happened over the weekend. Any good news? Uh, I mean, you, you touched on that. We got a Toy Story 4 teaser finally came out. Oh, I didn't out. see the teaser. You didn't see the good? teaser. It's, it's, it's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty funny. But a lot of people, you know, I, I think the conversation going in was it was perfect. Toy Story 3 ended it perfectly. And now, from you know, when I looked at the teaser and looked at some of the backstory, there was – it seems like it's a whole nother story because mm -hmm. at, at one point we had Rashida Jones writing this thing and then she walked. Oh, why because she of Lassiter? Yeah, uh, it wasn't necessarily Lassiter. Oh, okay. There was that rumor that he was like inappropriate and she's okay. like, no, 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 no. It's a different culture there at, at, at Pixar that I don't want to be a part of right now. So I'm stepping away. It's more creative differences. And it was at one point going to be Woody finding Bo Peep and that romantic comedy yeah. kind of vibe for this. That seems to be jettisoned completely, okay. and it's all about now, like, what is it like being the the, the new toy and getting a new owner? So, right, <laughs> I'm okay with it. Yeah. I, I'm I understand the the hesitation from people because there was a, like you said, there's the perfect three movies, oh, yeah. and then uh oh, here comes uh, here comes Indiana Jones Part Four because this, <laughs> I like I like Temple Doom, so I say the first three are pretty damn good. Um, who doesn't like Temple of Doom? A lot of people don't like Temple of Doom. They're wrong. Yeah, <laughs> it's it, it doesn't hold up as much. I still love it very much, but it's it's there's a lot of cheesy the stuff. Tomatoes for the fourth part. 
<laughs> yeah, we should. 87% or something. Um, but yeah, Indiana Jones and, and the Temple of Doom, we recently, because we watched, I watched Raiders of the Lost Ark, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Yep. Watched a little bit of Last Crusade. And then my wife was like, well, let's watch some of Temple of Doom. We started watching it. it like, I, Kate Capshaw is really cheesy in that movie. Like, she, really cheesy. She's, in the movie. she's, she's, yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's pretty bad. Um, but right I still love here. it. I know. Yeah. I know. It's, I, but, I, but I still love it. Anyway, so I can understand the hesitation with people that, because eventually, in any movie, if you do enough of them, there's going to be a bad one yeah. sooner or later, like Rocky Five, you know. Um, yeah. But how are you I wasn't about scared it? about it, but now that you now you've got me scared, that's going to poop on my favorite. You love Toy Story. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. that's with my son. Like he, we went to Toy Story Three, and he was in the costume. He mm -hmm. went as Woody for Halloween several times. It was the cutest thing. He'd walk around, and they go, "Oh, nice, you know, oh, it's Woody." And he's like, "Yeah, I'm Woody. It's a costume." Right, right. He had to explain to people. He didn't want them to think he was actually Woody. Um, <laughs> right. But it was just. I mean, yeah. I can't listen to "You Got a Friend with Me" without getting yeah. teared up. And it's. It was a. Yeah. This, Look, I it's, hope it's good. I like the Pixar. teaser. Although, yeah, you know, it's Pixar. Yeah. Although you mentioned that, you know who needs to? And I know that I'm. I'm the old man in, in the room, and everybody listens to Spotify and everything too. I'm starting to get on on the way. Like Pandora stinks. I'm on Pandora too, and I just am so over it. It stinks. Oh, I'm so Spotify. Do you pay right for it? Uh, I think so. I don't, and I get the same sweater commercial every 13 oh, yeah. seconds. I do pay for it because I don't get commercials. Oh, if you're going to pay for one, pay for it, Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have to. Yeah. Because yeah. Pandora stinks, yeah. and I'll tell you why it stinks. My my youngest, she's a little over a year, loves music. She does the does the dance. It's like in the middle. What the, kind of things do you play for her? Like Sesame Street Pandora, right? And just like so, all these kids' music will play, but it's the same shit. If I gotta hear that that Jason Siegel Muppet song one more time, I got the whole na 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 in my hands. Everybody's perfect. It plays all the time after every like seven songs. It's like there's so many kids' songs out there. Why? Like, how does that work? Do Shift it up. You guys listening to Rafi at all? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rafi. That's the good Ra stuff. Rafi, but the other one is you know uh, but Basho. Basho, I can't stand because because I know that he knows how to say spider. But in the beginning, he goes, "Hey, I want an itsy bitsy spider. Hey, hey itsy <laughs> bitsy spider. It's a, it's spider. Say spider." And he says it at the end. He goes, "Spider." I'm like, "See, I know you yeah, can I say it, you hump prick." It. And it's like, "Itsy bitsy spider." It's it, it's it drives me crazy. And I got to hear that numb nuts every like four or five songs. You think he's doing it on purpose? Yes. He's like, I mean, he's just probably, to annoy Christian. He's probably from. He's probably from the city or something too, but it's like the one thing is if that's the way you say it. I look, I grew up there, I understand it. But, but then at the end, you say spider. But you, you clearly can say it. You clearly can say it. <laughs> bring up, bring up Basho, itsy bitsy spider. I've never heard of Basho. Itsy bitsy spider. And, and I didn't it, know it, Rafi was still around. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, let Rafi's me tell you, around. I have a great Rafi story for tell you me, after after we go to the spider yeah. situation. Basho, it's there. See, look, it's popular. That's it. Basho oh. and Friends original. Listen to the beginning of it, as we get to the commercial. Oh boy! Girl, oh, is that Yo, that's Tiffany Haddish? Tiffany Haddish is everywhere. Yeah, she is. Okay, here we go. You need to turn it up. Okay. Now listen to the way he says hey, spider. Hey, you guys know One about a little spider? That's it. Says normal. Itsy spider. He says it normal. Yo, he's a friend of mine. Watch. I want to tell you a little story about this spider. About how he's now he said so far, so down. far, so good. You want to sing with me? Come on. Did he change his name? Did he wait? The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. This is not the one. No, it, spider. Out came the sun and I'm gonna right tell you this way. Spider. I hear what you're saying. Boy, when I have not. kids, I'm it's gonna tell my spider. kids. I'm like, this is awful. Well, you want to listen to this? But, but the it's thing not is, the one. Spido, though. It, it, this, spider. Is different, this is a different version. Oh, God, uh, this so, is brutal. But, but yeah, this is brutal. But, but my daughter that dances to it, and like you know. All right, we can turn it off. Yeah. See, but now what did no, you say? Stop it. You did oh. that. I uh, Blake didn't never listen to any of that. He listened. He was a Black Keys fan when he was a kid. Like oh, he didn't. I tried. He she listened to rock. She we loses didn't... interest. She loses interest. She likes that. She loves Elmo. Oh, these, I avoided Elmo. a lot of but, these. But oh. the thing is, it just yeah. repeats. So I, I like, so Spotify. Spotify has a, be, has a better list. Yeah, then they had. There's lots of great playlists on there. Gotta do it. Um, and yeah, I mean, I I put together like new music and stuff, and then you okay. go to you pick. The, it's the same kind of thing, but I think they have a bigger catalog. Yeah. I mean, it's terrible. I mean, it's just, it's and just I awful. love Spotify. Yeah. Well, yeah, speaking exactly. of Spotify, by the way, <laughs> so I know that um, the the boys at Afterthoughts were asking about how come we can't get on uh, Spotify because our our guest uh, Jordan Harbinger last week is on Podcast One is in on, is on Spotify.
Spotify. So that's a great question. So we're working on getting our shows on Spotify cool. now too. So that's something to look forward to. Let you guys know um, that that's going to happen. Um, all right. What else is going on, Riley? Anything good? You don't want my Rafi story? I, of course, what I want your Rafi story. Tell happened? me, tell me, tell me. What happened? The spider. I forgot. I forgot about the ATP the spider. Yeah, what it happened? Oh, Rafi? what happened in the story? Rafi I don't a, remember. Rafi tells kids, uh, sings kids. Banana songs. phone. Yes. Ring, ring, uh, ring. Yeah, the, and you also know? the uh, eight, uh, the, was it the monkeys? The five little monkeys jumping on the bed. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so we loved Rafi as a kid, my brother and I, and so it was the first concert my parents ever took us oh. to. We went to tons of concerts. My dad was in the rock and roll business, and obviously he wasn't going to take us to those. So, but anything we could go to, and so we went, and we were like really up and close to the stage. I was like two years old, and in the middle of the show, I turned over to my brother, and I. <laughs> How old were you? Two. I was like two. Jeez. And I reached into his mouth and I ripped out. No oh boy. His uh, what's that called? Your uvula. What the. Oh and I ripped it right back. What are you, Dalton from Roadhouse? Oh my God, did you try to eat it? I reached in and I grabbed it. We had to rush to the emergency oh room. Oh my God. Like that is stitch. violent. Yeah, it was really, really unbelievable. How, how much older is your brother? Than he's three. He's two years older, so he's like four. You're kick into the yeah, street. I might have been three, he might have been five, Jeez. but like reached right in. Brutal. Good. And that was the start of my. That, uh, you were vicious. My sounds like it's the worst. My, my, that, my like, parents were like, yeah. what the actual F I is had, this child? I had this thing, right? Yeah, yeah. No, the dangling. No, not the hang here. The no, the no. Oh, oh, that in the pack. Yeah. Oh, you're the brutal. dangling. That the one punching I had, bag. I had a store at Vegas. Oh. Um, my wife will get mad at me, but I don't care. Um, when I was in Vegas, I care. Some there was some girl I was kissing, and she kissing. Yeah, sucked this thing out like to to, to hurt me. Oh, what do you mean? It, like the bottom of it, like pulled on it so Wait, hard. How did she get to That's the bottom your, of your tongue? I don't know what she did, but it it hurt. It ripped, and I was it was it was hurt for like three weeks. Like I was cut. I don't even understand how somebody would get I there. I don't know like, what she did, but whatever it did, it hurt. But yeah, like it was, she suctioned it. She was doing something, and at first I was like, oh, "This is cool. That's horrible. <laughs> whatever you're doing." And I went, I, I literally pushed her. I was like, "Ow!" And she like laughed. And I'm like, "You are vicious. You're an evil person." Wow. Like, yeah, I remember that. It, it was in Vegas, and I don't, just that brought me back to it. She didn't reach into my mouth and try to rip it out like my own si my, apparently wow. sibling. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but you know, sometimes you see something dangling, and you just, just gotta to... grab it. Wow. Well, I'm gonna ignore that one. <laughs> um, okay. So <laughs> anything else, Riley? Uh, yeah. There's, uh, you know, Game of Thrones. Oh yes, it is. Uh, it yes. has been announced. Oh, April, April. Yeah. Well, that was another thing we talked about on Jedi Council. Was yeah. that I thought April was going to be the target date. I was right because that's where I, it started, right? Well, yeah, because they Benioff and Weiss, who were also involved in doing some more Star Wars projects, um, and they hasn't they haven't announced anything except the fact they're going to start working on it after Game of Thrones is done, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what I got by that is as soon as they're done wrapping shooting. And once the first episode kind of goes up, and I go, well, then what I would guess, this is not confirmed, but I was going to guess that April would be where Game of Thrones debuts, and then in Chicago at Star Wars Celebration, we get more information on their actual series of movies mm -hmm. from Star Wars, because then it's then it wraps, we've been working on it, here's when it's going to come out, this is what it is, and then you have a big story for Star Wars Celebration. But, I mean, I might be wrong. What do you think? Make yeah, sure. I think I think that makes a lot I of think sense. Typically, you're pretty spot on with this. Yeah, stuff, sometimes honestly. I get I get a lot of shit wrong too. And, I, and the cup holder fans thing. Let me go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. The cup holders, no. Cup holder stuff, no. But uh, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Hey, it's, what if it's not. Like nobody in the what theater? If, I don't know. <laughs> what if they announce that they're doing the Obi Wan movie? Would you go? Oh, I don't want them to do Obi Wan. Yeah, I want them going back in time, and I want them doing. I do too. I was just putting the the what if scenario. Yeah, show no. Yeah. Show me the show me how the Sith and the Jedi began. Show me some big. Yeah, wars. I want that too. I think that's very interesting. I think that makes. Perfect sense yeah. for for what they've done with Game of Thrones is that you can you can maybe get that not the feel of Game of Thrones obviously it's but the a very history. but the history yeah. the many factions that you can maybe have I want to yeah. see a baby Yoda no you don't just a little baby Yoda. I don't I I never understood the Yoda <laughs> movie I, I do not want that Why stay are you away saying that? you're joking he's kidding <laughs> yeah are you I'd kidding? love to but would you no, yeah, I, I don't want to see a movie of it I, yeah, I just want to hold just one. hold a little baby well, yeah we don't even know what the hell species he is. Um, <laughs> All right. Anyway, Yo Darian. that's it. That done. Uh, no. no, there's there's a lot of other news. Uh, you know, Terry. Yeah, I know what Cody's. What's that? What's happening? You know what? Why are they playing music in there? What is this? 
You don't know this? It's Pokemon, guys. Oh, it's a yeah. Pokemon movie? So Detective no. Pikachu. I was right, getting see? there. Yeah. Was getting oh, there. way past my time. Yeah. Yeah. Riley was in on the bit. And Pikachu's where it's at. I was not. I was actually oh. looking, getting ready. Did you say Pikachu's where, is it at, where it's but at? you didn't know that song? He wears a hat. Oh, okay. No. I don't right, know so this song. Right. The first Pokemon, Detective Pokemon, right? Pokemon! You're fucking right. Detective Pikachu. Shut up. Who cares? To t- Detective, Detective Pikachu oh, yeah. trailer. Yeah. You, see you haven't seen it? No. It's hilarious. Okay. It's fine. You like it? No, I do. I love Ryan Reynolds. As, oh, is he Ry- as- Ryan Reynolds. As Pikachu. Okay. It's pretty funny. As, as, uh, why, are you lying? Or why no, no. Lying? I, 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 really, no yeah. I, I saw that and the, 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 I sent it to my son. I was like, oh, we got to definitely oh, check this okay. out. And he was like, yeah, that looks fun. Here. But I know that Cody's upset about it, I think, oh. because it's he wants more of the like real Pokemon well, story, right? Lucky for us, Cody's here. Cody, what do you uh, what do you think? Here's the deal, guys. Yes, sir. Pokemon. <laughs> I look. They have the, the potential, excuse me, for yeah. this to be like the next big Harry Potter type franchise. Yeah. Uh, but they're starting it out with basically a spin off. Oh. So I'm a little upset that they're going this route. It's like if they started Star Wars with an R2-D2 movie. Oh, oh I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Um, <laughs> Why uh, do they have the potential burn. to be Star Wars? Uh, no, he's, he, I don't know. Yeah, f- with but fandom. It's a huge universe. I mean, I think yeah. it would be. It Remember could be how popular a, it was? Yeah. 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 But see, here's the thing, though. Like, Christian, you don't care for it now. Let's say that this Detective Pikachu movie yeah. is a hit. You take your kids. The kids love it. But then the adults love it, too. There's an echo going on in there. Then. I don't know. The voice of God. But then. If this movie's good, then maybe they can do the real Pokemon story that we all really want to see. Which yeah. is why yeah. again, it's past, it's, <laughs> this is this is this is when you guys were growing up. I, yeah. I, I missed the Pokemon way. I had all the cards. I did too. I, coll- yeah. I was a card collector, and I don't care. Yeah. I was I was doing stand up when it was w- out here. I met you when it was really. Big. I remember one of the things is what the hell is Pokemon and how do we kill it? Like I didn't know I didn't know what it was. <laughs> what um, if my cards are worth something? Oh yeah, well, maybe you not, can give them not, to me, uh, and I'll not, give them to my holographic not, Charizard. Not probably. opened. Not I'll open? make you a good no, offer. No, no, I'll open in the cases. Mm. Okay, maybe. Um, just remember that game that everybody was doing and watching three people standing in the middle of the street with a car waiting to oh, just so, for them to yeah, walk by. Never, they're I like literally, like, they're, they're, the guy was nice, too, because they it wasn't traffic or anything. It was just a little side street. And they're, like, doing this, and the guy's just like, it's still pretty big. Waiting, I was in waiting, Long Beach waiting, this waiting. Finally, I don't people get hit by cars. I don't get shit like that. My, my siblings always said to me growing up, because they love things like that, I don't play games. Yeah. Like I just I'm not I don't mean yeah. that metaphor I don't play games I don't I think it's I, I don't get it Yeah Okay Like go write a movie uh, I I, I want to throw one more news thing at you because uh, you're a well the second Kingsman eh third Kingsman Taron Edgerton not a part of it looks like it's going to be a prequel thoughts I it depends. Uh, um, I'm cool with it if they go back to what the tone was in the first movie. The second one got s- turned into such a farce. I liked it. I yeah, I did too. I, yeah, I, I, you liked it. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, no, I, I liked the you second. Like, one. I, 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 I wasn't second. expecting more than that. I mean, it, it wasn't anything yeah. that I was going to be yes. like, oh, that's going to be. You see, the first one. The I fir- love the Elton The first John. one was over the top, and it was, and it was definitely a, a kind of a. a, a Spoof on spy movies for sure. Not spoof, but like a a take on spy movies. They, they said it was a satire yeah. on, on spy movies. There's no doubt about it. But it was it still it still felt like a real movie. As where the in this in the second movie it just was again it was over jokey, over the top, cartoony, and it just it just lost me. I thought Julian Moore, who I love, was awful in that movie. Really? Yeah, I hate it. I, I didn't like the whole statesman stuff, um, and I didn't like the way that they explained Colin Firth, all that stuff. It just it just yeah, I, I didn't like the second one, I, and I love Matthew Vaughn. I said at one point on the Schmoes that he was my at the time was one of my, like, probably my favorite director working because I loved right. Kingsman the first one, I loved X Men First Class, uh, loved Kick Ass. So I hope that he goes back to what he did from the first one. But a lot of people like the second one. Speaking of uh, some supporting characters in Kingsman, we have some breaking news here. Oh, 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 you beat me to it, Riley. Thank you. Let's hear it. Pedro Pascal hmm. confirmed is back. For the Mandalorian. Oh, Mandalorian. Okay. Yeah, good, good, he's been tap star in the TV series. Expected to premiere the, yeah. on. Uh, it's been rumored for the role. Yes. Sources say he was one of many actors being considered. John Favreau penned street. the series. He's the lead, right? He is the lead. Yeah. So that's probably who, that's, he, that's probably who's under the mask. Oh, so he's the Mandalorian. Yes. Yes. Um, well, so we that and that's and that goes to ma- making Star Wars. Cool. Making Star Wars. Um, they they had reported that first. They had reported yeah, that. They reported that months ago, a long time ago, and yeah. then it just never hasn't been confirmed. But they yeah. they it's it looks that's 
That's a great cast. That's a great lead. I like. I like it because he, you know, depending on what the they said, Lone Gunslinger. That's all we really know about right. the, about the guy. So th- when I think of Lone Gunslinger, do I see Pedro Pascal? Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. me too. That's yeah. great. Love love that that's confirmed. I think that very cool. Thoughts on Pedro Pascal in the lead? I just love him in general. Yeah. I think he's having a hot streak right now. I think it's deserved. He, I know that he plays that kind of thing really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see if we get more variety from him in future roles. But yeah, it's great chewing. Good okay. stuff. All right. Cool. Well, that's good casting there too. I think that we're going to go to uh, we'll go to a break in a, in a second here too because I know we're going to talk about the great Stanley legend Stanley yeah. um, left us yesterday. I believe yesterday morning we got the news. That, yesterday that he, morning that he passed on. Um, he, I mean, so many stories that so many people had about him. So everything that he meant to people. Um, and we're going to have a lot to talk about when we get back from the break as we honor Stan Lee. And then at 1130, the great Ron Perlman will be mm-hmm. in studio with us. And we're going to talk to Ron Perlman. Yeah, Riley, got something before we go. Oh, are we going to break? Yeah. We yeah. Well, I thought before we go into some heaviness, we uh, do some light stuff with yeah. that, that, that video. We'll, we'll, yeah, we can You're do, you know, do you know, All right, fine. Let's what take, video? Let's take us out. We'll take us out with this. Yeah. Cat. Come so, on. So, Come there's on. This, cat? so there's this cat video that's going on. So oh. I, well, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> before, you, before you do that, this was the one video that I said to myself that this video might actually either get Roxy or she's going to say the same thing. She's just not going to – to bring it bring, – I don't want you to look yet, Roxy. Because uh, can you bring it, bring it wide? She's bring not going to look at all. Yeah. No, I want her to look. But Why is there a dash it. between the S and right. C and Schmo down on T- your shirt? Tell me that later. Um, go back to the beginning. Volume up. All right. So here we go. That's Roxy, question, actually. Let, this, this is either one. You're still going to hate it, but may, it's, it's not tell what you think. Tell me when I can look. Go look. Here we go. What the fuck is that? <laughs> That's what one. What the fuck is that? A fucking cat? It's two. We're going to go hey, quote on this one. Don't fucking look at me like that. That's a <laughs> weird looking fucking cat. <laughs> Ma! Yo, there's a stray cat outside. I don't want it starting a fight with Lucy. <laughs> Lucy, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay, Lucy. Don't worry about it. Ma! That's Ma, there's a weird fucking stray cat outside. It looks... It looks like grandma the fucking thing. <laughs> hey, get the fuck out of here. I don't even know if that's a fucking cat. Blink, motherfucker. <laughs> hey, no, 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 no. So that, you know, Do you want to know what that cat's life has been like? Like, look at that cat. It's famous uh, now. Look at Riley. The Riley cat, this. The cat. The cat, the cat just went viral. Blink, motherfucker! <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't mean it has a home. How do we know it doesn't have a home? It's a stray cat. We don't know that. This is look. This this that you know that was dubbed in all that all that audio. Yeah, he found the video. It's it's Rappaport. Oh, that's what I thought. I thought yeah. it was Rappaport. Yeah, Rappaport. he does. Rappaport. He does this. Oh, Rappaport. so maybe it's not a stray that's cat. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Rappaport. Rappaport. Rappaport's Correct. audio. Uh, if you haven't watched his Instagram, oh my God, there's one. See, yeah, you guys can find it. It's oh, the it was one. a joke. Yeah, it was a joke. There is no mom. No. And the whole, the whole, okay. there was one where the guy was trying to get the Lucky. shopping cart up the up the escalator. You ever see that one? I don't think oh, I've seen that so one. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, his video is it's so good. And he like, just, hey, buddy, in. your cart. Try to find that one if you can. Michael Rappaport escalator video. If we find it, oh, um, so, oh I have. It's the best. Yeah, it's so good. But Rappaport, we gotta get, we gotta get on the show. We yeah, do you know the show. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Play oh, this, this, this is this phenomenal. is phenomenal. So it's all dubbed audio, Roxy. What fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> oh. hey. hey pal, that cart don't fit on the escalator. Yo, boss man, the cart don't fit on that escalator, boss. Yeah, now you're dropping shit. Look at you, you dumb <laughs> fuck you. Hey asshole, the cart doesn't fit. On the fucking escalator! What the fuck are you doing? Look, now your fucking beer's going up the escalator alone! I... You bald cock The cart don't fit on the fucking escalator! Oh, I love it. Anyway. That's good. I like that one. All right, cool. So, so we're going we're gonna to go to break. And when we <laughs> yeah, get back, we're gonna, again, we're going to honor Stan Lee. And then 11.30, Ron Perlman, Claire Lett. <laughs> No, it's not late to the party. That's actually from Obi-Wan Kenobi. You didn't know that? Well, you should, and now you do. Jedi Council, what is it? 
it's about Star Wars, obviously. It's Jedi Council. Every week, the latest and greatest in Star Wars movie news, myself and Ken Knapsack, that's right, the pit boss himself. We have a guest on, and we talk about everything happening in the world of Star Wars. If it's the movie news, the TV news, canon news, comic books, games, and then we take questions from you guys on Facebook and Twitter. It's a lot of fun. We've been doing it for a couple of years now. I'm still excited talking about it. The fan base is coming together again. I believe it is. I think it is. I hope it is. And we're talking Star Wars, so we like you. That's right. Right. All of you, if you're not a fan of Star Wars, come on over and join us every Thursday for Collider Jedi Council here on Collider Video. And we have an Apple Podcast feed or Podcast One, wherever you want to go if you listen to podcasts. And not only do you get Collider Jedi Council every week on Thursday, The Rule of Two with Mark Fernandez and Mark Riley, that's on every week. I believe it drops on Wednesday. It's on one of these days. It's a good show. You should listen to it. I like it. I listen to it. I haven't listened to it once. Hey, guys. Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com. And if you're a pro wrestling fan, which... I hope you are. Even if it's in secret, then you should be checking out Wrestling Sheet Radio Weekly. Uh, we've got a bunch of shows in the podcast feed. We've got weekly recaps for myself and John Roca, which you guys will probably know from the Collider family. Uh, that's for Raw. That's for SmackDown. We've also got the weekly roundup of wrestling news. It's a show I host called Wrestling Sheet Radio with Jamie Iovine and Elijah Bates. And we've also got a bunch of other stuff in our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. So check it out. Subscribe. And I hope you guys dig it. Hey, everyone. Mark Ellis here. You know, when I'm not trying to clone dinosaurs or drinking in my neighborhood watering hole, I am probably hosting Collider Movie Talk. It's a flagship show here at Collider. I like to say that because I'm the host of it. It's every day, almost. It's four days a week, which is still pretty good, above 50%. You can watch it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 4 p.m. Los Angeles time is when we do it. It's live, so you can participate in the live chat room. Go ahead and give us your thoughts on every story we have coming, because it's all the latest movie news of the day. Who did what at the box office? What horrible red box movies Bruce Willis signed on to? The DC, the Marvel, the Star Wars, the Lord of the Rings. Are they making new? I think they're, it's a TV show, and we still might talk about it anyway, because we love movies around here. It's myself and an expert panel of guests, including John Roca, Perry Nemiroff, Jeff Snyder, and other noted noters of note. You guys are going to love this show, and then we take your live Twitter questions at the end of the show at Collider Video. You can always use the hashtag Collider Movie Talk to get in touch with us, so subscribe right here to Collider Video. Check out Movie Talk, and check out the Collider Movie Talk podcast feed. We have a podcast feed now. You don't have to look at this handsomeness. You can just listen to it, whether you're driving to work, whether you're driving from work, or you don't have a job, but you have a basement and ears. You can listen to Collider Movie Talks feed. You can get it at Apple Podcasts or on iTunes. You also get Mailbag. That's the show that's hosted by Perry Nemeroff a lot more professionally than I run this pirate ship. That's our weekend show where she takes your letters. I don't know if you write them or you email them. You have to ask her. And Afterthoughts, hosted by Ryan Snelling and Jay Williams. I almost said Ryan Williams and Jay Snelling. Would anybody have known the difference? I certainly would. I would have felt bad about it because I'm a nice person, and that's why I host Collider Movie Talk. Check it out in video form or on our podcast feed. What's up, Collider fans? If you are a fan of television and you want to watch a guy that looks like me and a guy named Thad Williams talk about TV every single Friday, subscribe to the Collider channel. Collider Podcast is where you can find the video. Uh, we have our own iTunes feed, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. You can find it on iTunes or wherever you find your podcast and you listen to them in your ear holes. That's where Collider TV Talk comes at you. We talk about TV news. We talk about shows we love, shows that we don't love. And most importantly, we don't read any books because... Because TV has nothing to do with reading. We also have a show called Hypothetical Questions with myself and Roxy Stryer and all kinds of reviews right here at the Collider Podcast channel and the Collider TV Talk feed. Subscribe, rate, like, tell your friends, tell all your friends to tell their friends. And before you know it, it's a pyramid scheme of television. I'm Josh McCuga. You can see Thad Williams and myself along with Roxy Stryer and all the Collider personalities all the time right here on Collider TV Talk. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey everyone, I'm Scott Movie Manson. Just to let you know, if you already don't, every Friday here on Collider Video, I host a weekly film review series called Movie Review Talk. The title says it all. Every week I'm joined 
by two guest critics of my choice, and they're never the same. We review the new films. We pick something that's streaming that you might not know about, but is really great. And we pick a Blu-ray for something that you might have missed in theaters. It is fun. It is infectious. It is the Citizen Kane of movie review shows, and it's only right here on Collider with this guy, Scott Movie Mance, Mr. Movie Release Dates himself. Check it out every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, only on Collider Video. Collider Live back here on a Tuesday. Myself, Roxy, Brett, Riley, and the whole crew. Yep. And it's funny, you hear this music, you know, from the MCU, and we all kind of collectively went, ah, oh, man, because uh, the great Stan Lee passed away, I believe he was 95 years old? 95 years old. 95. Lived a very long life. He had so much personality. I mean, at 95 years old, I can tell you, he remembered a lot more stuff than I do you know, mm -hmm. at, at my age. And, and you, anytime you saw interviews with him and, and just um, how loved he was, and anytime he had any one of his cameos that popped up in any Marvel movie, the audience would cheer, and it became like a very fun thing that, that the audience always looked for, and him, and, and you know, and you had Steve Ditko, who also passed this year. Um, and Jack that, Kirby. Jack Kirby. I mean, I mean, it was it was one of those things too. And and our buddy, the uh, the late great John Schnepp, uh, there was a great picture that I can I can't remember. Forgive me. I don't remember who the artist was that did it. But it was a picture of Schnepp and Jack Kirby after Schnepp had, had passed. And 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 now you know now there's there's another there's another seat at that uh, that great table for uh, for Stan Lee. Yeah. Um, and it was funny because my, my daughter listens to the Spider Man CD and and, huh. and and Stan Lee actually does the the narration. He's just like. And he saw Crusher Hogan, and he's that had, had a great voice, you know, the old school New Yorker. And um, the one thing that you just saw is, I and I think Dagnino joked about it, and I feel the same. I feel like every single person in the world, except myself, took a picture with. That's what I, was I, say. I know. Yeah. I ne neither did I. Yeah. Yeah. Holy you stole crap. my bit. Yeah, I'm sorry, hey, but, but it's true. Everybody though. in our space, everybody, everyone, and the one but he thing, was so willing. Oh yeah, so. yes, he was. So. I'm just going to venture off for a second here. I'll we'll get back into honoring him. But I wanted to get everyone's take on this. Because the other thing that I did see because of that picture thing was Army Hammer. Did you see his tweet? No. Yes. So Army Hammer. Hashtag Savage. Yeah, if you can bring that up. Army Hammer tweeted out. There's nothing. I don't know what the exact words are. Uh, nothing better than honoring someone's legacy or a legend than po uh, than celebrities posting selfies with him or whatever it was. He was taking shots you know, at it for sure. Uh, so touched by all these celebrities posting pictures of themselves with Stan Lee. There's no better way to com uh, commemorate an absolute legend than putting up a picture of yourself. Um, now, here's the thing. Um, Do you think this is a joke? No, no, no. Oh, he, he, God, def no. He, defends it. he defends it many times inside of the thing. I, it's very similar to what we were just talking about, not to the extent of the Trump thing, too, but it's like maybe time and a place. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. I mean, are there some people... Who took pictures just like I took pictures of Stanley also, right? The other people who worked with him that wanted to honor him. I mean, I know a guy that I worked with in Fandango or shooting stuff with Fandango that worked with him and posted videos of himself and was honored by it and 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 he cherished those moments. So I think it was a bit salty. I think that that's one of those what's things. What's wrong with it? With what, a tweet out? No, what's wrong with take, posting? That's a what picture? I'm saying. I agree. I'm I'm with you. I think that I I don't I don't think that it was necessary for Army Hammer to, to post that out. Even if if you're sitting around, even if you felt that way. It's okay to say inside of the office, you know, or or to your friends, like, "Hey, look, you know, all these people posting pictures of them. people man. that didn't even know him. No, like, yeah. why they post? But to publicly do it, you're a pretty big, you're a pretty famous actor. It's like you're gonna catch heat on that, and I just don't think it was necessary. It's it's not a new thing either. He's, like, he's very outspoken. Is he no, no, no. Just in general, I've noticed when there are celebrities that yeah. pass, if you have a picture with that person. They they go up, right? That's, yeah, and that is that is a way of celebrating because you have a personal connection. Right. You, you're able sweet to sweet and harmless. I, I think and so that's too. how you want to honor somebody. I think what's what is a comment on the legacy of Stan Lee is that so many people, people have these it. pictures because he was everywhere. Yeah. He he loved the fandom. He was a part of it. Yeah. He was one. He created uh, these, yeah, didn't these fans. Yeah, the only time I was taking shots. I mean, he was taking shots more at celebrities more than so the fans. He wasn't taking shots at fans, of, but he was it, taking shots at celebrities. Some, a lot of the celebrities are fans of Stan Lee. Yeah, I mean, I've, but I mean, it was clearly going after other people, and he he just comes off the last couple of years as pretty salty in general. He's got such a perfect word. For salty. It's salty. the truth. Yeah. yeah. Um, people don't like to work with salty people. 
I mean, I don't. I've never heard complaints about people working with. Him. I don't know him at all, and yeah. I haven't heard anything like that either. I'm just saying in general. Right. Like you ever see somebody's hosting reel or something, and and they just seem so mad. Right. In it, like all they're doing is bitching and moping and complaining and like fighting for the people and you don't really want to hire that person because right. you kind of want to bring somebody in who's smiles and has has a little bit of fun and yeah. you know you can well there's it, nothing wrong with and i agree with you no, there's, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing with, wrong it. with fighting the good fight but there's of a way there's not. a way to fight the good fight but you want to yeah. know that somebody also is like a real person right. that you can have a conversation with and well you don't want to hire saw guerrera uh, for Rogue One, and you're just throwing grenades and so fighting the yeah. right fight. But why? Who's that grenade throwing? Who cares? Throw grenades. Uh, well, yeah, that so happens what, all the time. Is this the right fight? Like, why is this no. army hammers hill to die on? No, it was I know. Petty and I mean, yeah, I. Yeah. It, it's even if you're annoyed by it, and I, I think. I, when when people die, there is a lot of hey, look at me out there. I feel like, and but I'm not going to tweet about it. Yeah. And, and it could be a belittle. funny stand up bit. Like, yeah, yeah. You ever but later, later yeah. down. The, but this is like kind of like yeah, day, day of smoking. Yeah, gun. you know, let's not let's not do it. I anymore. agree, and this is one of those things because the same could be said about him. It's like okay, everybody else is posting pictures, but you're you're getting the heat for taking shots at those people when yeah. you should have just... And the day should be about Stan Lee, not about your weird tweet. Right, and it's, about th your that's problem the world with now. Yeah. The world is when Social somebody media. dies. That yeah. I mean, that's the Twitter world. If, if, if you like it or not, that's what people do. Someone dies, they, they relate that person to themselves in a way and sh share how that person touched yeah. their life. That's yes. just how it is. I if really you like it or not, it. that's yeah. how it is. I don't mind yeah. it either. I mind him tweeting that. Yeah, I, I think I'm with you. I think he that it's to me. On. Yeah, it's like it's unnecessary. I, I think that there's it's just everybody's posting it and it's just memories that they had because he was a legend and it's like it's one of those things where yeah, it's like oh I had this thing, and I I remember that day. I'm gonna I'm gonna share it with people because that's how I want to honor this and person. People mourn in different ways. Yeah. Like you know, it's very different when you go to an Irish funeral than when you go to a Jewish one. Right. You know, some there's different things, and even if it's not what you would do, and it seems a little foreign to you that you would post a selfie with somebody, that's how some people do, do you it. Any, any opinions for the booth, or no one cares? Alex doesn't care. No one cares. It's quiet oh, back there. Wow, are they quiet. in there? Are you guys in there? No. It's no, now no. we're here. It, it goes in line with like YouTube comments and Twitter and things like that. The th I'm bugged by a lot of things, right? But I don't feel the need to tell everybody. You know, I don't feel the need to blast out something like that. Right. And that's what people are doing. They're just you know. And his voice is is a hundred times louder yeah, his, because of who he is, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, anyway, it's so kind of mean. Yeah, it's just unnecessary. But that that doesn't take away from the great moments that people had with him, things that he had done, accomplishments that that he, I mean, he's an absolute legend. I mean, he was he was the name. I remember the first time. Oh, the, he's on the wall behind you. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I don't think this is necessarily one of the things that not the first time I remember him, but I, I was a big and I still am a big Kevin Smith fan, right? And Mallrats was something it just kicked my ass when I saw it in the theater. I loved yeah. it so much. And Stanley has a great role. Oh. In that movie, to where you know uh, they 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 talk to Brody about getting him, getting him back together because Brody's a huge comic book fan and and he runs into Stan Lee and Stan Lee gives him all this advice um, and it's just uh, it, that was the first time I ever really learned the personality of Stan yeah. Lee you know and I, I got a chance to see it and uh, what happened? What did you just drop? I just clicked something. Oh okay, you dropped no, something. It just scared point. me. But um, but you know. Memories of Stan Lee, things that you guys, what, what what legacy rocks do you think Stan Lee leaves behind in, in you know, obviously the positive? I mean, it's it's massive, and it's for so many different generations, which, like, even if, did you guys see Teen Titans go to the movies? Uh, no, I haven't. Yes. I gotta watch so it. So he has a great, great cameo in that, which is obviously showing ju just something like that shows kids, DC, like, crossover. He was just a loving person who wanted to be everywhere and do everything uh which is exactly what he should have been and that's what comics are about just yeah. inclusion of everybody and uh love for everyone i was actually the the movie that i'm in madness and the method um he's in as well mm. so i i'm really excited i got to screen it and he's adorable in it just like he is in everything right. and i think that he's one of those names where everybody wants to be a part of a project he's worked on because yeah. he's just, he's Stanley. Yeah, it's like the yeah. legitimacy factor yeah. that comes with it, the legacy. Riley, I yeah. mean, you you were, I mean, this is the one Oof. of the things that I saw, tweets that I saw, is that everybody knew eventually this day was coming. 
Right. Yeah. It's just what it doesn't. Well, the main the main thing that I saw, who was it? Was a Feige said, I never thought right. I thought that he'd live forever. You're right. Yeah. Right. Like, I think some people really didn't picture this day coming. She never wanted to. Right? Yeah. You're, not, you're yeah. not ready when right. it comes, even though you think you're ready. It happens, and you're like, oh. and it's tough at 95 when he, he's so lucid, and so that's the thing. Sometimes, like when people, there's people that are 95 that are not no like no, they're, Stanley. Yeah. They're like, you know? yeah, yeah, they're, they're, no. lights weren't on. So yeah. I mean, for him, you kind of confuse yourself into thinking at that point, like, oh. Well, he's gonna. Yeah, he's got a couple right. more years. I mean, well, got ten more what years. What was it exactly? They said just, just natural causes, just kind of. Yeah, it. Uh, mm -hmm. He was rushed to the hospital. Okay. Uh, pneumonia or something. Was it pneumonia? I thought I saw yeah. something about the I don't. I don't part, have the don't the know. article. I don't think it really says. Yeah. Um, if it's I been, remember yeah, it correctly, been, I mean, it's it's more like he was ninety five. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of what people were saying. Though, was, yeah. He was ninety five. I, I, I know he was. He went to the hospital, and that was that. And yeah, worked so. up until that point. Yeah. Like, yes. The whole time. He was moving, and there was the, you know that whole unfortunate thing that was going on with his leg, with the the yeah, his, his state, his, and stuff. his, his state. I wonder the, the what people that were taking care of him. Well, they they finally got out of there. Yeah. I think that it was a nice uh, resolution, well, I believe. Well, break that down a little bit for people who don't know. Well, it was like he had a business guy that was was essentially like mismanaging him. Power and attorney, is that what it was? I don't know if it was power oh, okay. attorney. I know he had some rough things going on with his daughter. Okay. And that when he lost his wife, you know, these, these I think, people going after his, mm. his fortune. I think that all got taken care of again i don't have the computer in front of me and i yeah. didn't you know i i know more about his legacy than i do about this because it it, it got to an ugly part right where when we were doing collider news we were reporting on this stuff going jesus what's right, going right, on right. um the guy there I were think, rumors that there were people that were stealing from him yeah yeah, yeah. and now and, I, I don't know exactly how much or what and, the and coaching thing. him to go on social media and say everything's fine right and then i think everything they got rid of that guy um, there, there was stuff like that with his right. POW entertainment. There was like lots of hands in the cookie jar. And we know that Stan Lee, um, you know, as he got up there, might not have been aware of it. Right. And, so, his, and his wife had passed. A couple his wife of, had passed. Not, like, yeah. what, seven months ago or something like that? Was I it, think it was a couple of years ago. Oh, it was a couple actually. of years ago. Yeah. July of last year. July, July of last, last year. year. Oh, okay, okay, cool. So about a year and a half. Um, yeah. So that that's normally you hear about that too once – and they were together for a long time. That once your significant other goes, that it's yeah. not too long after where where um, that the other partner passes as well. And that's, which makes sense. Yeah, it yeah. makes sense. And especially when you're attached for that oh, long, and when yeah, you're to that sure. age. Yeah, yeah. So it's a uh, it's it's just one of those things that I, it, the outpour of love, which is not surprising. If you said to me like two years ago, hey, you know, the day Stan Lee goes. Can you imagine what the amount of love that he's going to get? I'm like, of course. Yeah, I mean, you're going to see it. Surprised. You're going to see it everywhere. Yeah, I mean, it's. Gonna, I think when you get to that point and you have so because you've lived for so long, you've worked for so long. It's like a, people imagine the day that Betty White's going to pass. It's right. Like it, you've just been your hand has been in so many cookie jars. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. everybody's seen you, and everybody knows you. And I also love how generous he was with his friends. You know, being in Kevin Smith or. Jay Muse's movies or anybody that he like just as a favor as a yeah and he he and as a lot of people do he loved being beloved yeah you know yeah, and he loved being beloved. yeah and the thing was too when they treated him like a king and he acted like a generous king and yeah. he deserved that um, because when you, you you look at you look at that long post that Kevin Smith posted about him and I would love to hear Kevin Smith's story about the first time he ever approached Stanley or met Stanley and got him into do Mallrats and what it took or how easy it was, how difficult it was, whatever it might be. I'd love to get that point of view too because I don't believe, I probably wasn't that difficult because Kevin Smith's such a good talker anyway. Yeah. They probably had just the conversations and broke down, showed how knowledgeable he was about his past work and all that stuff. Yeah. And Stanley liked, Stanley was a big geek yeah. at, at heart. And he made, was, yeah. And he was, he was really, I don't, I don't think a lot of people think about this at the time in the 60s, what he created with these characters, right. how forward thinking he was. To you know, cr to create Black Panther in that time mm -hmm. sure. is insane. To to create like superheroes, there was a great interview that were that were rolling on Twitter through the the tributes where it's like, you know, DC was really out there, and you know he had these really like Superman perfect, and he's like, I want to make, you know, a superhero with foibles. You know what I mean? Like like Spider Man can't finish his homework on time yeah. because he's running around like saving people. Right. Like that that was just he wanted to give superheroes issues and and the publishers were like, You're crazy. Superheroes are perfect. And he's like, No, they're not. 
And it, that that really made Marvel kind of stand out a little bit, where you can kind of identify with truly for me, because I found Spider-Man in high school when I felt just so awkward. Right. And I was a Superman guy all the way up to that. And then when I found Spider-Man, I'm like, I identified. I finally went, yeah, yeah, I, I, I get it. He can't carry all these, this, the juggle everything like yeah. this. It was fantastic yeah. what he did. Well, yeah, he did. And I think that, and if you look at just the press reference in general, right, or what he, what he did his journey through comic books and then people see it now we're in the we're in prime the prime years of MCU oh yeah it wasn't like that for a long time you know so the fact that he got to see all of that i mean what a legacy he left behind though i mean he's he's a legend and everyone will always remember all the great things that i don't think I, I don't have any I, I don't have any great story of when yeah. i discovered him i mean i'm not i'm not like a fan or anything like that i, I like it i Right. He was great. The thing that I look at is the fact that there isn't anything bad about him. You know, it's not like you, there's all these th things dredged up about. Th like I think that's the sign of a great life, regardless of what he did. Especially in the ninety five years. Ninety five right. years right. that nobody's dredged up any crap on you, and that people just talk about what a great dude you are. Right. Yeah. I mean yeah. that that right there is uh, plenty. Yeah. There was a the, the, oh god, there's scandal. Yeah, was it? Uh, there was there was about it. I will say about a year and a half ago, it didn't seem to go um, too large of a place. But uh, somebody correct me if maybe we can look it up. There's something about his feet that he touched. That he touched. So, I don't know. Yeah, I, I really don't know. But and, you, even if it was it, a blemish. Yeah, a, yeah. a blemish. But yeah. uh, in. Right, I remember that something. I heard. I up. mean, from from what you heard, is he liked the ladies? Um, yeah. Now, and now, how how he was? I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember any of those reports. I'm not saying you're it wrong. It doesn't feel appropriate to talk about it now, but yeah. I, re I remember about a year and a half ago there yeah. was something. Like but there that. wasn't some. But but you're saying though nothing to where it was like. To, to I, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Nothing that's gonna follow. Nothing that's gonna follow him around. To that wasn't what you thought about. Yeah. When when you think of him. No. Right. No. Right. And you know, different generation, different time. The way that, you, and not that that's an excuse, but just he was never. I met him a few times, and he was nothing but ever just like. So bubbly, so kind, so willing to talk, so willing to take pictures, so willing to be wherever he needed to be for as long as he needed to. Right. Uh, such a doll. Just like yeah. the, such a doll. Such a doll. And again, we we our condolences to to Stanley's family. Um, we all. I mean, we, this is a very geek centric um, network. This is a very we we we've been no. yeah, right. Um, and we he's he's a legend. He's a legend to us. I'm sure you know he's a legend to everyone out there listening. So um, once again, the great Stanley gone at 95, and who will be sorely missed. Um, I am though pretty excited. You talk about uh, legends. Legends. Yeah, uh, Ron Perlman is in the house, and man, this is going to be cool. This is going to be really cool because I there's so much that I want to ask him, talk to him about. Obviously, he's got his his movie um, that he's here for Asher that we're going to talk about. It. It's it's in theaters and it's available on VOD December seventh. And the cast again: Ron Perlman, Famke Jensen, Richard Dreyfus, Peter Fascinelli, and Jacqueline Bissett. It's a good cast. And we're going to talk about that with him. We're going to obviously Makuga going to come back in because I've never seen an episode of, of Sons of Anarchy. Oh, it's my, one of my favorite shows. So good. So you'll be yeah, able to Son, talk to him about Sons it. Sons is one of my favorite shows. Okay. I, I love. Okay, good. That. So you'll have a lot show. to ask. Him. Oh God. You have a lot to ask him. Um, he's and so I, good on it. He's too. great. I mean, Hellboy. Obviously, there's there's things that I wanted to really get in with him too. And he's he's another guy. He's very outspoken. He's, there's there's things that I can't wait to just get his thoughts on. Like you, what did you, what you mentioned before? What was it? We want to get his thoughts on what? Aliens. Aliens. <laughs> We're bring just, in. Anytime I listen to him on like uh, any political station, he just has such interesting takes on. Yeah. Things well, that's what I want to say. So we are going to get a chance to talk to him. I'm going to go break early because if he's oh, here, can we stretch oh. it? He, oh. he had to step out for a second. Oh. Yeah, he's going to be right back. So okay. like probably checking for oh, right, aliens, right? right. Um, he was he's probably, checking for aliens right yeah. now. He's checking yeah. for aliens. Yeah. There's one it's guy daytime, that though. Come hunt on, man. down the aliens. Did, cops, did you get a chance to meet him? I did, yeah. Is he awesome? It was very intimidating. <laughs> what did he say? Yeah. Give us the interaction. Paint the picture. Was, was he was he just quiet like you think he yeah, would be? Yeah, he was quiet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very stern. And I'm like, oh, it's nice to meet you, Hellboy. I didn't say that. Right. But, you know. And, yeah. and then he choked you out to death yes. and you recovered. Yes, right. You just passed out and then you woke up. Mm -hmm. um, 
you guys have a favorite uh, moment, favorite uh, memory of um, of Stan Lee, guys? Before we before we bring Ron Perlman in here, um, I never was much of a comic book reader. I read a few things of his uh, just for like nostalgia, but uh, I remember playing the one of the original Spider-Man video games, and I think he narrated that one. I think it was for the Nintendo 64. Or maybe that was yeah, that was before Bruce Campbell did it. I think. Yeah. But um, I remember he he voiced uh, some Spider-Man game and playing them. Like, hey, this guy sounds familiar. And then now you eventually learn when he first cameoed in like either X-Men or Spider-Man, you, you briefly see him. And I'm like, oh, that's the guy. That's right. the guy. That's the guy who does the voice. And you know, and then just from there, just like grows and grows and grows. Interesting uh, to think about cameos. I wonder which of his, which of the Marvel films cameos he's shot. I think they uh, said he did Avengers 4. Oh, good. You think he that's did? Great. I think I read that Oh, somewhere. man, he's going to get a huge round of applause. I mean, yeah. that's going to be massive. That's going to be good. Uh, there's so many good ones. Do you think they'll done. CG him into For, the other into one? other ones? Yeah. Um, I was thinking about that. Uh, I mean, I maybe, think... maybe by pictures or something. Yeah. yeah. There might be like, like little <laughs> yeah. I think Easter that would eggs. Be cool. of, I don't want to see GM, but a picture yeah. would be I don't want to cool. do like a Tarkin situation, but I think like there'd be cool, you know, every movie there's either a photo of him somewhere yeah. or like the Stan Lee, whatever it might be called. Like the, what they did with the. What if he fully said, I want to be CG'd in all the. If he said it, I mean, you got to. That's you're, fine. You're I, wonder, well. I wonder if they put some stuff in the can. They possibly because they, because they said you know look eventually it's, yeah. it's going to happen maybe yeah. I think I believe that was a rep- like as like you know his health was you know getting worse I think they banked a bunch of cameos like back to back to back yeah. so he, he I it's know not he like did his a, cameos have anything to do with the rest right. of the plot ever no. so like you could you could fit it in yeah. Anywhere. Oh, yeah. yeah 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 um hey Copser, can you bring up actually Ron Perlman's Twitter because Ron Perlman's yes because okay. he he quote tweeted what is it Perlmanator. No, um, per, uh, permanations, I think. Oh. I think it is. Yeah. We're still on that Army We're Hammer still on tweet. Army Hammer. Yeah. I mean, Army I, Hammer. Yeah, I like I like Army per, Hammer. Permutations. Better. That's it. Permutations. So just go to the. Where is it? It's the. It, it was a. It was a response. Would be. I think it's replies. It's the yellow thing, right? Yeah, I think it's. Go back up. Tweets and replies. I think that's it. Keep going. What down. are we looking for? It was, so he he retweeted something that's Stanley. Keep going down. Oh, the yellow. No, is that, that it? Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. No, that's not it. That's soapbox. soapbox. That's not it. I'll find it. I'll oh. find it in the break, and we'll, we'll come back to it. I want to talk about it's about creativity and stuff too. That he. That oh. he um, but yeah. So do we have time here? Can we get a break? Uh, I think yeah, we're good. All right, we're gonna go to break, and when we get back, we will be talking to Ron Perlman about his movie Asher Woo-hoo. and a whole bunch of other things. We're live. Quite a lot. Hello, Collider fans. I'm Christian Harloff, and you see my stupid name in the background because that's my other show. It's one-on-one with me, Christian Harloff. What the hell is it? I just sit down and talk to people. I literally just sit down and talk to people about what the hell's going on in their lives and their careers, and it's a long-form interview show. Uh, Originally, it aired on Collider Video as far as the YouTube channel goes, but we moved it on over, and it's on the Collider Video Podcast, Collider Podcast, excuse me, on YouTube Go on over there if you want to see the video and to see the pretty faces that I'm talking to. Had some great guests over the past. Um, and we're going to have a lot more. And there's going to be people that you, maybe some celebrities or actors and actresses, producers, writers, all that stuff. But there's also a lot of the people that you know around here. I could have Copster on there. I could have Jeff Snyder, John Roca, Mark Riley, Roxy Stryer, whoever. And I'm going to find out more about them. Long form and also go to Apple Podcasts and check out the one-on-one feed with Christian Harloff. And not only is my show on there, Mark Riley, the Riley Roundtable, which is another sit-down, long-form interview show. That's also there. And when Steve Frosty Weintraub talks to Kevin Smith or George Takei, that's going to be on that podcast feed also. So if you're taking a long drive and you like those long-form interviews, pop on the one-on-one with Christian Harloff. Give it a rate, comment, do all that because it helps the show and it makes Podcast One go, hey, you know what? Those people should get ad money. Oh, hi guys, it's Perry here, and I am gonna tell you about The Witching Hour. It is the show that I host along with Collider.com's Haley Fouch. It is in podcast form on the Collider Factory feed, and we also have the video up and running every Tuesday for you right there on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. We talk about everything horror. We're talking TV, movies, the newest releases. We talk about movies that are celebrating anniversaries. We've even talked about books. It's crazy. 
If it is scary, we are talking about it on The Witching Hour. We also have so many filmmaker interviews, really cool stuff. It's all coming your way every single Tuesday on The Witching Hour. Check it out. Collider Factory and the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. Hello, Collider Live. My name is Amy Dallin. And I'm Corey Jondro. And we host a little show we love called Collider Heroes. And it is all of the things we love about movies, TV, comics themselves, all the breaking news, trailers, photos, but not paparazzi photos. <laughs> all of the superhero stuff we love, all of the indie comic stuff we love, all the stuff you had no idea was based on comics. 80 years of comic lore have led to this show and many years in film and TV, and we're living in a golden age of comics, and we want to share all of that zeal with you folks. So we talk about the stuff that's coming out. We talk about what we hope is coming out. We do fantasy casting of things that should exist. Why don't they exist? And we do your Twitter questions asking directly to us what we think of certain things. And every single week, since we both actually love and read physical comics by in print, we have a comic pull list where our five biggest favorite books of the week come out. And we dive into those with you guys. You can buy digital. I'll forgive you. As long as you're paying for your comics. It's all good. But if you buy in print, you can bag them and board them, and then they're worth more later, because comics are like certain things from the 90s that are totally worth the value. Buy comics, <laughs> buy in print. Digital's never worth anything later. Buy in print, keep comic stores alive. Or we can debate collector's items all day long. We can debate casting, we can debate movie, movie news. We can have all of our friends come join us, as we frequently do. We can ask professionals about their work. We've had some amazing guests come by the show. Yep. We try and to have catch it every Wednesday. That are on these properties that also love comics. You hear what it's like from their perspective, from inside, from outside. And this is all with the focus of bringing all this news to you guys. And we're here every Wednesday on Collider. And we love this stuff. We want to share it with you guys. We'll see you then. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. That's right, they gave Riley his own podcast. The Riley Roundtable is on its new home, and that is one-on-one -on -one with Christian Harloff on the iTunes feed for Podcast One. It drops every Thursday. The Riley Roundtable is a little bit about everything. It's about movies and life, life and movies and everything in between. I like to have on special guests for discussions like Justice League versus Batman v Superman, for discussions about wine tasting, for discussions about UFOs, and everything in between. That's right. The Riley Roundtable drops on Thursdays on the one-on-one -on -one with Christian Harloff podcast feed and later on Collider Video's own podcast video network. So check it out every Thursday, the Riley Roundtable. See you there. Hey, everyone. This is John Roca. You know me as one of the co-hosts for Collider Sports Time every Monday on Collider Sports YouTube and podcast channel. But we got another show on here. That's Collider Sportsbook. Josh McCougar, the wild man, he hosts that one. I join him on those, and they're a lot of fun. We break down the lines and the predictions with the over and unders. A lot of stuff going on for all the NFL games and some select college football games as well. We do that every week. We also do special ones on Thursday nights for those Thursday night football games. Let you know where to put your money, what bets to put down, who to go with, who not to go with. We give you a lot of information and we give you our thoughts. You know, Josh McCougar, he does it by the gut. I do it more from the statistics point of view. And every once in a while, Mark Fernandez even joins us to throw in his two cents on the Thursday night sports book. So there's a lot of sports action here on sports time on the Collider Sports YouTube and podcast channel. Join us there. Subscribe there. Definitely on the podcast channel. We need your uh, downloads, subscriptions, and views there. So give us some love on Collider sports and uh, we'll talk to you soon this guy okay. collider live yeah. we are back <laughs> he doesn't mind if i talk while he's talking no, no he and you, for you no <laughs> absolutely not it's gonna be like that it is definitely gonna be like that it is collider live it is <laughs> tuesday and man are we lucky here we today we're talking about legends all throughout the entire show and we're gonna end the show talking to a legend he has a new movie coming, coming in. <laughs> uh, Mark Riley, did you meet him? He's a, he's a great trivia player. Oh, fucking legend. Yeah, he's really he's really good. That's one. Really, that's one. You get you get you get as many as you want. That's I'm not gonna I'm not gonna limit you. What, what do you think about that? What do you think about the four uh, the four F word rule? Do you like it? Do you hate it? You wouldn't be able to stick to it. No way. I think it's un-American. Yeah. <laughs> Fundamentally, I, especially today. I, I dig what you just said. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I'm. Uh, I can roll what you're smoking. Okay. I love it. Good. Or, Smoke what you I don't know what I, I, I don't, I don't know. Where, where was I going with that? I don't know. You tell me. I'm, I, I'd love to hear it. Though. You were introducing me, I was, and, and I and I cut you off. And I, that that was like 
winding up to be like one of the fucking great introductions I've ever had. <laughs> he was like, and I blew it. Yeah. It's like, uh, well, I'll, I'll, introductus, I'll interruptus. <laughs> I'll get us back. The legend is How about Ron that Perlman. one? Never heard that one before. <laughs> introductus, interruptus. Introductus, interruptus. And Ron Perlman is with us. He has a new movie coming out called Asher, and it is available on VOD and digital December 7th. Ladies and gentlemen, you can also see it in some theaters if you happen to be in uh, any one of ten places. Ten places. Well, which ten places do you know yet, or not? Or not? Um, New York. I know New York and L.A. Yeah. and I think Dallas and Chicago. Four and corners. Maybe Atlanta and the rest of it. I'm just going to make up. That's yeah. fine. Just That's say fair. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. You're right. Cool. Pittsburgh. Yeah. It's, it's so going to be Pittsburgh. If they knew so, anything, they wouldn't live in Pittsburgh. <laughs> right. Well, the movie uh, is about Asher, who's played by Ron Perlman. He's a former Mossad agent. Turned gun for hire, living in, in, in life in an ever-changing Brooklyn. Approaching the end of his career, he breaks the oath he took as a young man when he meets Sophie, who's played by Famke Jensen, on a hit gone wrong in order to have, his, have love in his life before it's too late. He's got to kill the man he was for a chance of becoming the man he wants to be. Action movie. Who the fuck wrote that? Did you write it before <laughs> you, you got did. in here? I don't. I never. I didn't write that shit. <laughs> did you like that writing or no? Does it, Not does really. It, it's no? a little clunky. It doesn't well, summarize what the movie's about? Is that a picture of Hellboy on your wall? It is. It is indeed. Right adjacent, St- Stanley adjacent. Yeah, that's poetic, man. It works. It works. This is and and, and, that, and that's purely coincidental, right? A hundred percent. You had no idea. I'm I was lying through in, my right? fucking teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Do you that's two. That? That's two. That's two for me. Do you that's change that picture, like whoever is coming up? Well, we, we that have... picture. That picture was Brad Pitt a second ago. No, honestly, <laughs> we don't. We don't change it for everybody. Just no. the greats. Oh. Yeah. No, we do. Oh. And, we... The, and not the new greats. <laughs> No. Only the greats. Just yeah. the greats. Well, we, right. knew, we knew that, again, we knew you were coming. There was, we knew we were going to talk about Hellboy in general. We knew there's a lot of things we were going to talk to you about. But first, I do want to talk about Asher here mm. on top. So you didn't like the reading ex- itself, or maybe probably, it was probably the reading. The yeah. writing was fine. It was it was the delivery was awful. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd never heard it read like that. It was bad. It was bad. I'm not, that's why but I'm. But then again, I'd never heard it read, period. So. <laughs> well, what would you say is more of a problem? But I never want to hear it read again. <laughs> not that's by basically me. the point of it. <laughs> Well, what? Well, I just go to see the movie, you know. Yeah. Like, you know, whoever wrote that shit is like, you know, he's, he'd be looking for a job the minute I get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> how is it? might have been me. How's the movie? Is it good? Better than the synopsis? The movie is awesome. Yeah. The movie is um, okay. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not. The movie is way better than okay. Okay was a segue to like right. me going five years ago. We started a, a little movie studio of our own called Wing and a Prayer Pictures. And Asher was the first movie that came in that the kind of um I'm being serious here and don't get used to it. Okay. <laughs> but the, the 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 what we what we were kind of imagining um in a real fantasy oriented, you know, like reach beyond your grasp kind of thing is to create a an environment that existed like in the 60s and 70s, which like where, where you, got, you got like Coppola and, and Scorsese yeah, yeah. and William Friedkin and Brian De Palma, all these cats that like came up with a with a brand new kind of American filmmaking, which was which was very ambiguous and very kind of there there were no blacks and whites. Everything was really really gray, and there were no real heroes, but there were great anti heroes. And Asher comes across our desk just as we're opening our doors to become a movie studio. And so Asher is the result of five years of of me trying to get the thing made. And uh, um, we left a, a number of motherfuckers on the side of the road yeah. to get here. You know, I don't regret a thing. Um, luckily, I was wearing gloves, so there are no fingerprints. <laughs> and, um, you know... Anything else you want to know? No, but that was no, yeah, that was but that was the one though. I'm so. very proud of it. The, the, the movies. I play this this guy who's like a gunslinger. Yeah. You know, he's 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 an assassin, and you come to to realize that when this dude was in his prime, nobody could touch him. I mean, this this was Shane. You know, this right. was this was the fastest motherfucker on the pike, but he's 68 years old when we meet him. And he's slowing down a little bit, and some old injuries are catching up with him. And and he's living in Brooklyn, which is gentrifying. To the to to so so the the neighborhood he's living in is, is becoming an anachronism. As is he, they both become disposable. Like the original beauty of Brooklyn is sure. is disappearing in front of his eyes. As is his vitality and his life force. And it's a, about a dude who you know 
is being forced into thinking about, okay, what now? And then uh, there's a series of coincidences that force his hand and, and, and um, um, what ensues from there on out is pretty badass. Did you, you guys film in New York? We filmed exclusively in New York, yeah, yeah. in you're, Brooklyn. Yeah, because you're a New York guy, right? Said, I am a, I'm a New York native. Yeah, because I, I was, you were born in Manhattan. I have my own bongos. Good. <laughs> I'm, I'm really a native. <laughs> no shit. I'm really a native. Yeah. I, was, I was born in Queens. I lived in Queens for about oh, 18 I, years. I, yeah, I used to go to Queens, and then my, I, my, my vaccinations expired. <laughs> <laughs> so she stayed in Manhattan. Smart. How do you <laughs> no, I know. I go to Queens, to, you know, to get to JFK for yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, well, that's that's what you got to do. Uh, but you stay at it other, otherwise. Um, There's some great ethnic food in Queens, by the way. They're absolutely that, like, that, like you know, um, Manhattan used to have a world class deli and a world class Chinese restaurant on absolutely every street. And you'd be hard pressed to find even a decent one in the entire borough now. It's Whereas I remember that's crazy that you say right. that too, because when I go back to visit, like I remember being able to basically do that, walk down a block and say, Okay, great restaurant here, but it's they seem to go few and far between now. No, they they've actually disappeared. Yeah. And and uh, it used to be so like you you couldn't get a bad pastrami sandwich. Right. You know? you, whatever deli you happened into, it was just world class. And you know, time, baby. You yeah. Know? You think that's what it's time that new people coming in, not not respecting the the old, the old it's ways. It's hard to keep a very good restaurant that only a few people come into with how expensive rent is. It's yeah. just like that's yeah. the nature of the restaurant. Well, that's business. it. That's it. Every, that's everything is like, um, yeah, everything is 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 corporatized and yeah, yeah, and. Um, you know, the whole borough is almost becoming like, you know. Do you blame the Brooklyn gentrification in the movie on like skinny jeans and wearing snow hats in 80 degree summertime? Are we blaming hipsters? What are we blaming? There is a reference to <laughs> good, like, you know, good. girls. Because 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 Asher is, is, is Mossad and because he works in an organization where all the dudes are named either Avi or Uzi or Lior or Abram. Right. You know, there's references to girls' pipics. Like a pipic is showing... <laughs> that you never used to happen in Brooklyn. She's walking around with her whole pipic out. <laughs> Now, I'm not going to tell you what that means. <laughs> I think we got it. You're Jewish. You're good. I, I got it. I said Pippic three times. How many more do I get? You get I, you there's only 12, there's a 12 Pippic limit. Yeah. How 12. do you end up with this cast? Is this straight offers to everybody? Did you hold auditions? What? A, how did you get? Because this is an amazing group of people. Mm. You know, it's really, it's, it's, it's very random. I mean, you know, some of them were, were just dream come trues. You know, we went to Richard Dreyfus. We expected, a, you know, a complete, like, flat out no. He read the script, which right off the bat is rare in Hollywood, you know, for somebody, because this was a labor of love. It's a low budget picture, so nobody's going to send their kids through school, you know, having made this. Um, but he, he, he dug the writing and then, um, and then we were able to work out the deal, the dates, you know, and which was cause he's a busy dude. Same thing with Jacqueline Bissett. There was no resistance whatsoever. And the, the fact that the two of them are in this movies, that's kind of this movie that is kind of an homage to the seventies, which they both single handedly were the, the, the hero and heroine of, I mean, you know, if you look at her filmography from the seventies, you look at his, it's like. They were the who's who, mm -hmm. and here they are as you know our good luck charm and, and like one of Wing and a Prayer's first, you know, runs at, at, at trying to mimic a period in time of fil film wise that you know I have nothing but the greatest revere for. I would be fascinated. We I I, I was lucky enough to have Richard Dreyfuss in here um, about a month ago and was only supposed to sit down with him for about an hour. We ended up talking for like two hours and fifteen minutes because. You just listen when he when he when he talks, and he, and I and I know how outspoken he is in general, um, about politics, and I know how outspoken you are about politics. The conversations that you guys must have had um, during the the takes where you know you're obviously not shooting must have been legendary. I can't imagine how many conversations you guys had. Did you wind up clicking with him pretty pretty oh, well? Yeah, phenomenal. I can imagine. Like it, was, it, was, it was as if two dudes who hadn't seen each other in twenty years, but who knew each other like besties when they were young. <laughs> That's what it was like, and I'd never, I'd never met him before. But it was immediate, like the, the, you know, the, the, the chemistry, and we had a lot of the same. You know, we're not that different in age, so we have the same kind of flashpoints that we relate to. You know, generationally, um, he's uh, very much an activist, 
takes a little bit of a different view of things than I do, which made for some great conversations. Yeah. But both of us are terribly, you know, involved in the affairs of state and concerned with, you know, the the um, the. Uh, I mean, it wasn't nearly what it is like when we were shooting Ash. It was wasn't not, n nothing had been exposed like what we now know. Right. You know, I could see you doing awesome in a political drama, something like a House of Cards kind of a movie. You would play an amazing president. Yeah, I'm thinking about doing it in real life. Man. Yeah, you know, is that yeah? That was what an actually I saw. So I saw on you know, you, so you saw that fact. As I said in 2020, 2020. You said you, is that something you legit want to you want you're thinking about doing for real? Is running for president? Um, no, not ever. No, <laughs> <laughs> it was just bullshit. The, but I the, felt as though. Um, that 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 announcement and that selfie that I took with my hand over my heart, yeah. you know, and I had this kind of really kind of like uh, um, earnest face on, and then the caption was, "I'm hereby using my immense social media following <laughs> to announce my candidacy for President of the United States 2020." That w that statement was put out at 9:20 LA time on election night 2016. Oh, okay. the, the election hadn't been called yet, but he was like, at that point, he had just knocked down Florida and Ohio and Pennsylvania, and I said, holy shit. And I was deeply, deeply looking to Twitter to find out, you know, I follow a major cross-section of great minds, literature, journalism, arts, and I wanted to see what the world was how they were processing in real time what we were watching. And what I noticed was that everybody's hair was on fire, <laughs> but nobody was directing it in any kind of useful thing that you can actually hang your hat on. Mm -hmm. And I realized that if this thing goes down the way it's looking like it's gonna go down, we have to begin to articulate immediately like, uh, What's wrong with this direction, and what the what what and and what it is about the America that we've all come to love and and want to give our lives for, ha, ha, how to get it back? And yeah. so, I I kind of did this mock, like I used my Twitter feed to 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 do kind of a a mock platform, where I was trying to describe, you know, vividly the America that all this bloodshed was spent over the course of 241 years, you know, defending and, and defining and building. And um, because I felt like unless we can create something that the, the populace at large can hang their hat on, can grasp onto, can imagine, that's aspirational and inspirational, and any other spirational you can think of, <laughs> perspirational. <laughs> Who said that? Oh, I just did. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. It just got See, tweeted out. Yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. running on this kind of a speech, you're, the way you talk, the way it's a vote. It's, it's a, a vote. vote. It's a it's vote. It's a vote. Yeah, it's it's a shame that I'm not going. You should going do it. With it. Yeah, no, I'm just having too much fun making Asher and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, I just, <sighs> well, I that's can't. what it comes down to. I mean, you look at because like Arnold, when Arnold ran, he yeah. took a big break for a long time. And, yeah. then he, and then it's one of those things some people don't, don't want to do. Some people are very outspoken and can now, because of social media, everything too, can have a very powerful voice, as you do. Um, go on a lot of different shows, have your uh, opinions out there, as you do. And you can still make the movies that you want to make. And mm. there are a lot of movies out there that are that you're, you're still doing. There's there's other movies that you're that you were involved in that I'm sure you've been asked about a hundred times. But my fans would kill me if I didn't ask you I, I, your thoughts on obviously they're doing the new Hellboy that's coming out in in January. Um, have you did you get a chance to do, are, do you, are you do you have any consulting at all? Did you, is anybody ask you any advice? <laughs> I'm just curious. You know, but yeah, my wife asked me. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, hey, schmuck, put down the chicken leg. <laughs> we don't talk anyway. But, I mean, just I mean, you know, <laughs> David Harbour, who, who's playing the, the role now. Like, I don't know if he had. He has not out. called. He has not reached like, out. Okay, let's like, go. Do you when hope you, that he calls? Huh? Do you hope that he calls? Would you take that call? No, no. I mean, you know, I would take the call. I hear he's a terrific. Uh, we actually had dinner together. That was kind of like uh, um, a little bit publicized. Um, but my dear friend Patton Oswalt. Yeah. Um, is I guess friends with uh, David and also uh, my neighbor in, in 
the neighborhood I live in LA. So we've, we've, we've developed this beautiful um, relationship where we, we run into each other in coffee shops and bookstores and, and grocery stores and stuff. And out of the blue, I get a, a thing from Patton saying he'd like to put a dinner together with the new Hellboy and the old Hellboy oh, that's cool. as kind of a peace thing and a kind of a passing of the torch. And, and so I said, you know, I love Patton. I had heard good things about David. I had a couple of actual exchanges with David on social media. He's also politically uh, outspoken. And uh, we did it. And it was a really cool evening. Um, but it's, look, man, it's like I did two Hellboy movies. I invested a huge amount in, 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 in playing the character. I spent a long, long time um, really poking and prodding the bear to get the third one made, and I, I fell short. Um, Did the rug get pulled out under you guys about that one? Did you think it was going through, and then it just, or, or it was never really kind of set in stone? I never thought it was going through, okay. but I did, I did know that Guillermo had a, an amazing idea of how to close the trilogy. And it was theatrically so dynamic and so, you know, if you were a fan of the two, the first two Hellboys, yeah. not only were you going to have your, you know, the top of your head blown off by, <laughs> how, by how it resolved, but um, you were going to get finally, you know, the, 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 the payoff in the investment. Right. I mean, because, you know, it was always designed to be a trilogy and the second movie ends, you know, with, a, with an ellipse, you know, dot, dot, dot. By the right. way, I'm pregnant with twins. Right. Boom, roll credits. So I felt like we had owed the fans closure, and I just couldn't. There were too many people who, who were moving in too many other directions that I just couldn't pull it off. So if you ask me about it, it's, it's kind of a, still an open wound, yeah. and I prefer not to really... Uh, I wish everybody well, but I prefer, you know, to kind of... Leave it be. Okay. That's and that was a uh, again amazing work. I think that is one of the things obviously that you will rightfully be remembered for. You brought such because th I didn't know much about Hellboy um, before. Nobody so the, did. Right. And from what he said, this was the, one of the great lines um, when we were doing post production for Hellboy Two, I think it was. And I walked in one day to do the the, the uh, ADR um, dialogue stuff. And Guillermo is already in the studio, and uh, he says, My friend, I have very good news for you. <laughs> we went from a readership of 600,000 to 12,000. That's how many people yeah. on the planet knew about Hellboy. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was one of the more obscure uh, superheroes, which I think was one of the things that attracted Guillermo to it was that um, – the purity of it and uh, the non-commerciality of it, you know. The, the For a guy like me who really didn't know a lot about Hellboy, if anything at all, and I walked into the first movie, ha I didn't know a thing. And I, after I, I watched that movie back to back, I love the first Hellboy. I love both of them. But for me, I, I knew, knew nothing about Hellboy. And the whole, just kind of your portrayal of a guy that is sort of the antihero but also a superhero kind of situation – really brings that whole movie together for me. I mean, my little nephew wanted to be Hellboy for Halloween, and mm. my sister-in-law didn't have the courage to tell him that he couldn't paint his whole body red. Oh. So <laughs> maybe next year. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, did you, how did you and Del Toro first, uh, how did you guys first hook up? So he was getting ready to make his very first ever movie. Um, he had been very prolific in TV in Mexico, um, doing these uh, um, 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 anthology shows, but they were mostly horror oriented, mm -hmm. and um, began writing, began directing. You know, began understanding that he had a a, a real f feel for for being a filmmaker, and then ended up writing this script called Chronos, yeah. and just sent me a letter out of the blue. He he knew somebody who knew my address. He wrote he hand wrote a, this letter, uh, basically talking about you know, what this meant to him that I had done, what this meant to be. And it was so like, oh my God, this th this is the most beautiful letter I've ever received. You still like have it? A real, yes, of course yeah. I do. But also it was accompanied by the script to Kronos, which was a, essentially a vampire movie, but it was also one of the most literate 
sophisticated, nuanced. It was not a typical, um, you know, one-dimensional horror movie, which was basically just designed to, to, to elicit responses. This was a real thinking man's film. Yeah. You know, it dealt with the whole mortality issue, which is why we invent the, the vampire to begin with as a way to deal with our mortality, our immortality, etc. And I began to understand that I'm not dealing with a with a with a, a typical dude here. This is a guy who's quite brilliant. He came to LA, we met, it was the same thing that happened with Richard Dreyfus. It was like two dudes, you know, immediately, you know, on the same page, Just joking each other, joking yeah. with each other and having a great old time. And uh, I went to Mexico and made and made Kronos, his first movie and and we uh you know, we've been very, very good friends ever since. Um, it seems like he makes the call now. It's very, very similar with Scorsese and De Niro. It's like Del Toro and yourself. And it's like, if he makes the call, does he even have to tell you what the script is? You're like, I'm no. in. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, number one, um, it's not automatic because because it's just automatic. But it's really automatic because if you look at the parts he puts me in, nobody gets me. Like Guillermo, one hundred percent. Yeah, nobody is able to to nobody ever has been able to to imagine me, you know, in a certain sort of uh, way that translates to three dimensional characters on screen better than Guillermo. And so I always know that if he if he's pretty sure he wants me in his picture, it's going to be good for both of us. Right. What do you find that you're recognized for more now, for Hellboy or for Sons of Anarchy? Because that fan base, including Josh and myself, are rabid. Mm -hmm. well, that's about 50-50, really. You know, it's, it's um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I wish I had a more interesting answer. No, yeah. Maybe okay. if I said Pippic. Yeah. <laughs> Well, nah, no, that doesn't work. Try, doesn't try saying work. it three times. We'll see if it pick, works. Pick, pick, pick. I, see, I can't even say it three times. I couldn't. I had. I said it one and a half times. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my final answer. Yeah, that's fine. Well, these two, I knew that when when you were coming in, they were. They, I mean, Sons of Anarchy. I still. It's one of the shows that I have to binge. It's and, I, and, I, and it's been on my dock to do when they when they. I told them you were coming in. Go ahead. Floor's yours. Go yeah. go nuts on. I mean, we're gonna, both diehard yeah. Sons fans, in my opinion. Uh, one one of, if not the greatest crime shows ever put on television, but more of a family drama, in in my opinion, and uh, it rivals Sopranos and all that kind of stuff. Do you think they did you wrong at the end of that show? Because I really think fuck they, yeah, yeah, they did you. Wrong. Oh yeah, right? they did me really wrong. What do you wish had happened? Um, look, man, you know where we're we gonna get if I was to tell you my <laughs> inmost dreams, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Twist my arm. Ooh, that's enough. Um, <laughs> the uh, the th the thing. I thought I was gonna make it all the way to the end. I was kind of promised that I was gonna make it all the way to the end. The what do you mean you were kind of promised? Uh, it was always it was always you know articulated that I, that I you know if we were gonna go seven seasons, which was the ultimate plan, that I was gonna be there all the way to close. By Sutter. Cl close to the end. I'm not going to mention any okay. fucking names. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> You'll never fucking catch me mentioning fucking Kurt Sutter's name. But um, I uh, so don't even go down that road. <laughs> I see where you're going with this. You asked it. Doing Rocky, my job. Man. Doing my job, man. But anyway, it was it was mentioned and not casually. Then things changed. Um, but what I, the, 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 and this is hindsight, and this is if it was Ron's show, it, it would be a whole different thing, but it wasn't Ron's show. And, but it was a show that was like the most revered thing I've ever been involved in. So who am I to talk about like what might have been better? However, <laughs> since you asked, <laughs> um, what had been discussed was kind of like, where this guy who had gone as dark into the into the into the you know the, the the deepest darkest places that you can go that power can take you that once the power is removed from him he goes on a path of redemption and makes sure that he makes it good with everybody before he's 
before he's taken from this world, while the, the, the new president is so seduced by power that he goes as dark as, as Clay had gone. So that you see this kind of like exchange of, of and, and it would have said something about absolute power corrupts absolutely because you know from where Jax had started from his innocence and his purity to watch him turn into this monster just because he has the gavel is, is, is like, okay, that's what happened with Clay. You know, that's what happens with anybody that gets absolute power. And that's, I, think, I thought that would have been um, uh, phenomenal. Yeah. Did you end up watching the finale? No. Huh. I didn't watch. You just didn't want to? I, well, not, not, don't take this the wrong way because I don't, I'm not a big fan of watching me anyway. <laughs> We're big fans of watching. Yeah. Thank you, and I, you know that's yeah. fine with me. Like that's 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 the deal. I'm I'm happy to make yeah. that deal. Shake your hand on it and uh-huh. just go through life that way. Why is it though? Is that just insecurities and stuff, or is it more? Of because a... I never see myself objectively. I I always see what I could have done better. I always see a fat guy. I always, you know, I mean, I I'm I'm just like looking at this thing, not with all of these uh, um, um, subjective, distorted kind of and and. Uh, I end up getting upset, mm. and I was never upset when I was on set doing it. I was just having a great old time. So why ruin it by watching it? Yeah, I mean, and you've always been so, like that, right? So, so I stopped. I mean, I, I watched the first few years of Sons, and then I stopped anyway. Do you yeah. know what happened in the finale, or you have no idea and just don't know how the story ends? Um, Sutter comes back, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. How'd you is, guess? Is there one death in the show that hit you the hardest of that maybe you were responsible for or somebody that was part of the series that, you know? I think every, everybody responded to the death of Opie. Yeah. yeah. You know, right. as like, what the fuck? Where did that come from? Right. You know, he was as beloved as any of the characters on the show. Yeah. And it seemed premature. It seemed... Uh, it seemed like uh, um, somewhat, you know, jarring. Right. Um, Was there more to that? Then? But then, when you look at other shows, you know, you look at like uh, you look at other shows, and you know, there's there's really beloved, important characters getting offed all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's part of the way it goes in TV. You know, you get attached to something. You start falling in love with it. That's the, you feel like that's one of the reasons why you're watching it, and then all of a sudden they pull the rug out from right. under you, and then their their notion is to replace it with something even more compelling. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. But you know, those of us who are the worker bees, we can only sit here in our armchairs, you know, in retrospect, mm-hmm. and, and, and and say bullshit like what I just said. You know, <laughs> it's like it would have been so much better with redemption. <laughs> yeah, but still, yeah. You know. Um, before we, we let you go here, I do want to ask you a couple of things that we we lost the great Stanley. Oh my um, God! Yeah, yeah. And I saw and if we can bring up uh, Ron's tweet, please, because it was a quote tweet, but it was it was yeah. So basically, you just God bless the storytellers, but it was this amazing. You can bring up the quote itself. Uh, we'll just click on the Ryan Parker tweet there. Um, and, yeah, right there. So they, he said, "Zoom in there for me, boys." I used to be embarrassed because I was just a comic book writer while other people were building bridges or going to medical careers, and then I began to realize entertainment is one of the most important things in people's lives. Without it, they might go off the deep end. I feel that if you're able to entertain, you're doing a good thing. Um, I thought this was such a great quote. It really summarized who he was as, as a man, and mm. I think that for what we all do, that you just look and you go, yeah. I mean, that was like a, kind of like a breath of like, yeah, it's absolutely correct, because there are those times like, I live across the way from your medical students. And I'm like, I'm going to go talk about aliens on the air. But I'm like, but it's entertaining people. I've got messages from people that say, thank you. My day is so much better now because I, you guys made me laugh. You made me do that. And you realize when a quote like that, what mm-hmm. he was doing. Did you get a chance to meet the man? Um, and what did he mean to you overall th- throughout your career, if so? I did get a chance to meet him. I never worked uh for Marvel, I never worked on a Marvel project, so I never got a chance to get in the weeds with him like I would have loved to. And you know, now that he's gone, you realize, oh man, this was a, this was one of those. I don't have a whole lot of regrets, but there's a couple of people that I really would have given my, you know, uh, a finger, yeah. or a fingernail, anyway, fingernail, it's <laughs> to have uh, to have been in the trenches with. And Stan was one of them. And I know, 
you know, I'm good buddies with Johnny Berenthal and Theo Rossi and, 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 you know, and tons of people who were truly impacted with his imagination and, and the opportunities that he, you know, provided for those of us who work in the fantasy, you know, um, uh, silo. And they're, they're just ripped apart by that loss because so he must have been something to work around something to to somebody to really really pull your heartstrings to be to have been around and to collaborate with so that's a regret yeah. and um but i i can't say i knew him deeply i I've, i saw a lot of him in the last 10 years um and we always had this warm embrace and wonderful you know like shared a couple of little war stories but you know I would have, I would have loved to have, to have um, traversed his world a little bit more yeah. uh, fully. Well, again, I think that I he, I wrote a, a memoir. Can I get back to me for a second? <laughs> Definitely get back to me because, like, let's face it, I'm still here. Um, <laughs> was that too, was that too soon? No, no. That's true. That's a real that's a real pipic move there, Rod. Real pipic move. There. I just showed my pipic right yeah, there. That was it. Thank God this isn't, no, nobody sees this. Right? It's no. live right now. It's yeah. Are you kidding? No. Is that was that fucking camera? Yeah. <laughs> why am I, been, why am I alone? Because we're way better looking than He's, that camera. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. This is not even like, not that I have a good side, but I. Well, you've I, got that camera. Oh, I got, got that, that, that camera. One, that one's looking at you. Um, Your memoir. Like five or six years ago, I wrote a memoir. And, you know, not that I was. Are we out of time? Am I? Am I? The, well, you're, uh, look, I'd like to have you here for another hour, but I think they want to. They think they want to pull you out of here. Okay, I'll, well, can you have me back and we'll talk about my memoir? But basically, I'm, I'm hold you the, the point that I was trying to make was, while I'm writing the memoir, is when I had the epiphany, which is why that quote resonated so much with me, is that there's a nobility to the storytellers, because what we do when we when we dig as deep as we can and get to the real truth of the human condition is that we provide an opportunity for people to celebrate their commonalities rather than their differences. Like you watch a movie and you say, oh, I know exactly what that dude's going through. And you walk out feeling better that you're not the only one that feels that way. You're not going through this morass alone. And we do. We we uplift people, and as storytellers, and uh, God bless Stan, and that's what I meant when I wrote that. Oh, it was beautiful, and it was a pleasure to have you in here today. Please come back. Yeah, I'm sorry uh, went over, went over time. But you, not, don't look, apologize. You, look, Asher is the film. It comes out Fuck December no. 7th in theaters <laughs> and available on VOD and digital again it's December 7th. And the title is Asher. The great Ron Perlman, please come back. I uh, would love to have you back and talk some more stuff because I got some questions about some Star Wars stuff that I heard, but I'm not going to ask you now. I'm going to put you on the spot. I'll do it some other time. Oh, cool. I have no idea where you're going with that. <laughs> some other time. All right, guys. Take so it easy, everybody. with that, uh, Collider Live Tuesday show. When we get back tomorrow, it's going to be the whole crew just shooting the shit, and I'll see if Roxy can limit it to two F bombs. I'm kidding. We'll stick to four. Collider Live, Mother F's. See you tomorrow.